Hello, Galaxy. I'm Chris Perillo, and you've tuned into a truly live edition of the Locker Gnome Digital Review, TLDR for short. I know it used to be the Locker Gnome Daily Report, but we uh, we don't do TLDR daily anymore. It's now weekly at this point. That may very well change, uh, but Digital Review seemed to fit, and I didn't want to lose the TLDR acronym because so many people remembered what TLDR was back in the day. Uh, it's a podcast wherein I am joined uh, with, you know, with, by, for, through, uh, some preposition of people, a, a, a cabal of fellow nerds and geeks. Uh, this week it's Glendon, Josh, and uh, also Brad, aka Toxic Doom. Uh, we will be inviting more people onto this uh, as, you know, time marches on. You may have seen some segments recorded from the long form podcast. If you had not watched the long form podcast in recent weeks, as uh, we've been recording it by way of StreamYard, which is a sponsor of ours. They power the 24 seven Twitch streams on my channel, Chris Perillo on Twitch, as well as maker deck, a 24 seven maker oriented live stream, wherein most of the activity is for people who are interested in making in 3d printing. Uh, so thank you for joining. I wanted to try something this week where instead of producing the podcast after it was recorded, as we had been doing, and some people had seen that, I thought, well, what would happen if we actually streamed it live? So this is kind of coming a little out of the blue, not really announced, scheduled. Yes. So it may have popped into your feed. You may have received a notification saying, oh, Chris Perillo is live in this channel. And I think, I hope I'm in the right channel. I'm not sure <laughs> it's been that long since I've done live on, on YouTube. Uh, you know, certainly uh, willing to, to give it a shot. Uh, so feel free to uh, you know, sit back and enjoy the, the banter as it unfolds. This is typical to what you might hear on a, a casual live stream on Twitch and out of that interaction sprang the idea of doing something a bit more formalized where we'd be able to share not just perspectives and opinions, but potentially help uh, and uh, sharing advice between one another is a little more interesting than just hearing advice from one, one individual. So the format starts with theoretically, if the people who are, are here with me this week, if you have a new discovery to showcase it, to, to say, here's what, you know, I've got, and I don't have a new discovery this week, but I've got an old one that I, I've not yet talked about, but a tool that I find uh, indispensable and how I live without it is beyond me. Uh, and then uh, loop around again to have a, uh, a, oh, hang on. Does it say dragon? <laughs> it does. I, I forgot to turn off the banners. That's the one thing I wanted to do. <laughs> Oh, hang on. Yeah, Chris Brill is the dragon. I'm the well, because I was 3D printing a dragon and I had it, I had it pulled. Oh, I've just can we just do this whole thing again? Cause this is just this is embarrassing. I yeah, got well, it's fine because it'll be it's edited and everything, right? I mean, well, that, yeah, this the, isn't live in right? post. Well, this is live, <laughs> but like in post, this is live right now. This is live. Yes. Oh, on oh. YouTube. So yeah. I, I can't, so we can like, restart it. So we can't edit what we just did. No, that it is the out line. there permanently. Nope. I will forever be known as Dragon. The dragon. <laughs> I'm like, what? I saw Toxic's comment private chat. I'm like, Dragon. I'm like, oh shoot, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to turn that off. Well, normally when when we'd stage the podcast, I I, I would toggle that. But uh, well, now at least you know everybody's name, so you can make that association as the broadcast uh, uh, goes on. I can easily do this. Oh, yeah, it's gone. Off the oh, wow. so technology, wow. super smooth. It's, it's a microphone conduit, Windows plug-in into the browser. It's a very, it's a very interesting little feature with that. Uh, so uh, we'll go around, showcase something that we may have, something new, maybe for you or for the rest of us, and then go around again and uh, talk about something a little deeper, doing a little deeper dive, uh, more discussion-heavy stuff. Uh, that uh, should prove valuable to the people who are, are tuned in. And then, of course, we, we'll talk about anything that might happen in between, like when I screw up production. Do not trust me when it comes to production. I will screw things up, which explains so much. <laughs> so much. Hmm. Uh, I, I, I will never meet the mark as far as production goes. I will always drop the ball. Even if I'm not carrying balls, I will drop them. It's inevitable. Uh, so before I uh, uh, go to everybody else, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to showcase my recent 
not really recent pickup. It was just something that I, I use on a regular basis. The most recent tool that I use, the most interesting tool that I learned about from Papa Bear, I was having issues with 3D prints coming off and the, the edges not being very smooth, uh, not being very clean, and didn't really know of an easy way of, of, of taking care of them. So normally I would just hold a lighter up to the edge and, and burn off the edges. And of course, in the process, end up burning some plastic. So here I've got uh, one of my more recent uh, figure prints, a sand trooper, sorry, <laughs> sand person, AKA a Tuscan Raider. These pieces articulate. And parts of these, uh, the, the parts that came together, there were some that had rough edges. So in order to clean up those rough edges before I would use a lighter and then effectively char parts of the print. But what I learned about was this, a, a deburring tool. There's probably a more formalized name and it, it came in this case with replacement blades. And this is what it looks like, right? And, and they come in many, uh, I guess, shapes, sizes, handles, uh, but effectively you hold it. I gotta be careful because this, this is a sharp blade. And then you use it kind of like a, I don't know if you, like, uh, is it like a paring knife? Is this how yeah. I'd use like a paring kinda knife? Kind of whittle away at it. Yeah, you whittle away at whatever object it happens to be. And I've ended up using this for more than just plastic and 3D prints. I've used it vegetables? for a variety of things. No, <laughs> not vegetables. I can see him doing an apple. I've, I, yeah. I have a, an, the only vegetable I really Kill a carrot. managed. Yeah, ooh, I almost knocked Carrots. over my beer. Uh, carrots. <laughs> I'll, I'll sh shuck. Can you shut you shuck corn, but do you shuck carrots? You peel, no, you peel carrots, you peel, peel carrots. carrots. Okay, yeah. Fine. Well, it's like a shucking action, isn't it? No, shucking sure, is we'll say it is. I mean, if it makes well, you feel better, you shuck your prints, you, you pare away at your prints, and then it ends up creating a smoother liner, smoother surface, effectively deburring the object in question. And previously, I didn't have a good way of doing it. And then I learned about this tool, uh, indispensable as far as I'm concerned. And like I said, I've used it for more than just 3D prints. When I come along an object that I it needs to be smoother, but I don't want to use a knife, right? It's a little inelegant to use something that sharp in a, a situation where it would just be overkill, right? You've got different types of blades that you'd use in a variety of situations. Like uh, I, 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 some people might use a, a hobby knife to clean things up or to smooth things out. Think of this as a, I'm not going to say more precise hobby knife. And, and you, you know, to... This is, I guess this is what I call a hobby knife, right? Like an exacto mm -hmm. to use the brand generically. Um, it's sharp and it does work, but it's not as, um, I would say not as rollable because <laughs> it's rolled right off the, uh, rolled off of the table and onto the floor. I lost my deburrer. Okay. Probably just should stop. Copyright uh, strike. Uh, yeah, no doubt about that. Yep. Uh, yep. yeah, I, I will, I will move on. So I, I got it. I couldn't even tell you how much, but it's absolutely been worth it. I have not yet replaced the blade, but it's a tool that you don't realize you need until you need it. And it was super affordable. And being again, someone who's, you know, into three printing a lot, I found it indispensable to clean up, uh, surfaces. But, uh, I think that if you've ever run into, a rough surface that you need to smooth out with precision. This has been for me, uh, an indispensable tool. I don't know. Do y'all have a, a deburring tool or is it just, 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 just me on my end? I have Not one. Yet. I do. Do you use it, Glendon? I do quite a bit, especially if, uh, I'm doing a print that requires some supports underneath the print that doesn't set flush onto the bed. And you've got the, the little artifacts, from whenever the the supports are on there, it's really good to use that deburring tool to take that off and to kind of smooth the edge down. Yeah, I you know I'm trying to think. I think I ended up using it on wood, other surfaces mm -hmm. where again you run into. Um, oh, what else did I use it on? I I want to say, I think I used it in a scenario, and I probably shouldn't have, but I did, and I feel it worked. Um, stainless steel uh, tableware, right? And sometimes you drop a spoon into the garbage disposal and then and then it's it's rough, right? Yep. Then it, it's, it's, it needs, it's got a burr and you need mm -hmm. to deburr it. That's another practical example where I do believe I used this tool to effectively smooth it out, right? And then I use yeah. like a high grit sandpaper to, you know, really kind of polish things up. But to effectively eliminate that burr, you need mm -hmm. something to cut through it. And, you know, I'm not whittling away at metal in, 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 in creating tons of shavings, from it in that scenario, but it was still something where you don't realize you need to deburr 
or to effectively smooth an edge of something until you do. And you don't want to be reaching for scissors. You don't want to be reaching for, um, what do they call, uh, like packing? What do they, what do they call a uh, utility knife? You, is that what they are? Um, yep. you know, to, when you cut through tape on packaging, you don't want to reach for a hobby knife. There's a certain blade that's good for the job. And I'm not, I'm the opposite of Tim, the tool man, Taylor. Like I, I know enough to be dangerous. I do not surround myself with power tools. So when I talk about tools and get excited for a tool, it is genuinely useful. And one of those things that, uh, you could add, and I don't think you would be disappointed. And they, they was relatively affordable. If anybody's, but anybody's interested, I'm sure we can uh, pick up a link for uh, an Amazon. Uh, I, I don't know. what There were like a, a thousand of them available, and I just grabbed the, the most affordable one that seemed like a pretty good package, and it comes in this, this wonderful little case. Josh, you got to get one. Yeah, no, I do. I, you know, it's funny. You, you held up the X-Acto knife, and just the other day, I think it was last night, actually, we were trying to cut a piece off of uh, one of my prints, this print of an ornament we did, and it actually snapped off the tip of the X-Acto knife. That's wow. how strong this plastic can be, that you're, the PLA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy. You got to be careful. In fact, I did that with a, what's the, what's the pliers that you used? I know there are names for everything. I'm just horrible at it. Um, they're, they're, they're sharp. They're like, they come to a point, they're very tiny, and, and people clip with them um side cutters are they uh mm -hmm. that, that may be very sharp like very like they're little pliers very hand, like yep. super tiny pliers mm -hmm. and sharp blade and it comes to a point and they clip um okay I that's need what those too. Yeah. well i got i got one and i was clipping and i was trying to cut something and it was so the material wasn't been so hard i ended up breaking the pliers and the piece went flying and i'm so lucky one of these uh smaller than that tinier than that but yes like okay. that but smaller and i it was it was it was a cheapy one apparently because the uh, part of it part of the pliers shot off and oh and wow could, flown into skin eye whatever i mean it was that was for a stupid reason too i mean i was i was trying to cut something that i thought could be cut it was just the material was just so strong that it ended up snapping the hardware itself so yeah josh you, you gotta be you gotta you gotta be you gotta be careful it's Especially crazy because some, sometimes tools. it seems so delicate, like the pieces break off so easily. And then other times it's breaking the actual knife. Like, well, but that could be, I'd imagine, a, a defect in the blade more so than... It could be. that We've had know, this forever. This has probably right. been yeah. weakened over the years. And, you know, yeah. I mean, it, 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 I don't know of how many micro fractures you might see in a blade, but it could have been a combination of... of many things not the least of which is pla and, and pla is certainly different you could use it on like a certain pla and it would kind of go through it pretty quickly versus a harder pla and I've, I've printed i've had both and end up in a similar situation so yeah deburring tool would definitely take you a long way yeah not new for me yeah. but potentially new for everybody else toxic no personally i just use a swiss army knife i mean my prints much bigger so, you know, I can hold the full piece and just go all the way around and deeper it that way. But if I was printing something smaller, like what you're doing, it makes sense to get the deburring tool. So that's, pretty basic that's, over here. Glennon, what do you got this week? I think your, uh, your pickup is a little more interesting than mine. Yeah, I went to the local, what was it, like a grand reopening of the comic shop. Mm -hmm. because it had closed down and then went under new ownership and they've kind of remodeled the place and put some new things up that were for sale that they didn't have previously. And me being a superhero buff, love it. Growing up in the seventies and the eighties, you know, super friends, DC comics were my favorite growing up. And Meanwhile Superman. at the hall of Glendon. So I picked up this trying to get it to where there's not a huge glare on it. It's a print of superman and i just think it's really awesome it's like he's in front of the sun re-energizing his powers because we all know that that's where he gets his son from the yellow sun um Pretty cool really nice it wasn't that expensive um it's already got the the mat around it for a frame i just have to get it framed up and then it's going to go up on the wall but yeah i really enjoy it i think the colors pop on it yeah, see, that's the thing about, I mean, art is subjective and everyone's got their thing. 
I, you know, is that I'm Chris's way to... of saying he doesn't like it? I think so. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just <laughs> Let's clear the air. Why like, did you spend money on that, right Glendon? <laughs> like, did you lose a bet like and had to take that home? What happened? It's just amazing to me what people like. I just don't understand it sometimes, you know? Just but good for you. Wow. Good for you. Good for you. I mean, yeah. if that's what you like. That's not You're what right. I meant. That's not what I meant. <laughs> Everyone's got a different thing, right? And, uh, you know, when you find your thing, you, you know, I, I guess when I find my thing, I, I, I tend to go, I tend to go overboard. So this may very well be, if it's not already a gateway drug, right? For today, it's Superman, but now you're going to need the entire Justice League. You're going to need Green Lantern. You're going to need Wonder Woman. You're going to need Batman and yeah. Robin, Hawkman, et cetera. You need super, you need the super friends collection. So now my question is, are you going to expand beyond that one? To have a theme if you're not doubling down on a superman and I, I don't you don't strike me as much as i've you know doubled down on darth vader you mm -hmm. don't strike me as a person who would necessarily um uh, uh uh double down on one thing or another you, you're more of a renaissance geek that way yeah and, i i'll probably get the others or in some form of fashion I, I figured or fashion it, rather um and make a little display out of it that's what I had in my head anyway, and I figured that that would be a good centerpiece to start with since he's kind of the official, unofficial Superman, yeah. leader. The leader, you know? yeah. Well, everyone always viewed him as kind of the the guy. I don't know. I thought it was the Wonder Twins. And what was it? What was the monkey's name? Gleek? Was that yes, the Gleek? Gleek? Yeah. That's, boy, that takes me back. Uh, by the way, Silver Sunbeam's here. What? Y'all are uh, uh, slumming it here in the tubes of you? Yes. Monday evenings, we're going to try streaming the uh, podcast over on the YouTubes. That's, that's the goal. That's the plan. And by the way, Don, if you're still with us, caught that comment with the, uh, my, my dragon, um, subtitle that I had in there. Uh, that Superman is fire. Look at that. See Glendon fire. Thank you. It's fire. Literally. Literally, fire. literally fire. Yes. I think the only, um, I, I, and I've thought about going back and getting them, you know, when I have the bandwidth and the revenue, uh, the, the actual Super Friends figures, the Kenner figures, because mm -hmm. I had a couple of them. I had Green Lantern and maybe a few. I never had Superman though. Um, but you can pick them. You could you could you could pick them up thrifting or on mm -hmm. eBay. The figures, but I, I remember I'm more of a figure guy. So as far as the uh, as far as that fandom goes, have you collected much more of of that? Whether that's that type of art, that type of print, or specifically within DC. Um, I've got some other DC pieces that I've picked up over the years, some statues, small statues here and there. Um, specifically, I think I've got three or four statues from the new 52 whenever they relaunched um, several years back now with DC. Uh, I've got a Superman, a Hawkman, um, Green Arrow, Batman, and maybe the Flash. Yeah, the Flash is the, is the other one that I've got. So, so that's more, pretty cool. You more uh, DC or Marvel? Do you mix the streams? I I mix them up. Yeah, I don't really have one over the other. I enjoy one just as much as I do the other. It's not one of those pick a side type things with me. It's Actually, just it is. enjoy oh, no, them with all. With you, it's not okay. With that's me, it's enough. not. That's good. With me, yeah. it is. I will not. Okay, see, I'm with Josh. Then I got You got to pick a side. It's it's yeah. Uh, no, you Marvel don't. all the way. Uh. Mystery Goat does know. Uh, he's right. Mystery Goat knows me. Chris is like, if you don't go all in, then don't do it at all. See, that's my feeling. Like, Glenn, we can't. Just, it's like having, I'm going to have a single potato chip out of this bag. Like, who does that? Psychopath right. does that. That's what you can't, yep. you know, you got to go all in. You got to, like, replace everything with that thing. Yeah, and normally I am like that, especially whenever I started collecting the Black Series figures. Mm -hmm. And remember that I went crazy and continue to do so this day. I'm, you know, I'm upwards of 500 now. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know you'd gone up that. I mean, really? Wait, they have they even produced 500 Black Series? Close to it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm oh over God, 400. Kind of I don't know if I've hit that 500 mark yet, but I'm over four. That's because I stopped like almost cold turkey. Uh, I, well, it's an addiction, right? I mean, action figure collection, it, it's an addiction. Um, yep. I have, I'm sitting on copious amounts of, of like duplicates that I've thought, okay, maybe I need to be figuring out how to sell these um, for a lot of different reasons. 
uh, but I got them on sale or I'm like, Oh, I'll get it mm-hmm. to open, you know, um, over time, you know, when, when, when it was different times for me. Um, but yeah, I, I, I didn't even realize they'd gone. Well, I knew they, wow. I hadn't thought about it when they stopped yeah, numbering it's been them. 10 I years attention. now since they started <sighs> making those. Oh, you're right. Cause the force awakens really is when they went, mm-hmm. well, they rebooted the, the, that, that scale as, as black series. That's right. Wow. Force Awakens has been about 10 years. Pretty yep. darn close to it because Jedi was just a, she was just an infant when TFA was out. Now she's, she's a, well, she's young enough to not know enough and old enough to know too much. It's Jedi. The perfect age there. Yeah, it was perfect. Where yeah, they sure, can let's get into that. any and everything and know just enough about it to <laughs> be dangerous. Well, you know, and I'm trying to give her all the tools that she needs to, to, uh, 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 enable her. We ended up going to uh, speaking of Marvel. I should, this is what I should have brought up. Uh, never mind. I shouldn't do it now. I don't want to stomp. But um, I ended up get, uh, a friend of mine took Jedi to the Lego store. I mean, we all went. Uh, we were all there. But he took us to the Lego store. He loves building Lego. He doesn't have a lot or sets. He doesn't have a lot on his own. And he ended up getting Jedi one set that she she wanted in the in the entire store. And she ended up going with the Avengers Tower. So it's kind of a proud Papa moment. She went with that one, which is amazing. It's going to be huge. So I'm going to be building that on Twitch with her. Uh, we'll be putting together the uh, putting together the Avengers Tower, and then I ended up uh, he gifted me the Pac Man set, which I thought was fun. And then she, Jedi also wanted the Loop Coaster, so he threw that in. Just as nice, just like hey, there's stuff that's going on in your life right now, and let's make a good memory. So it was very very kind of, of him uh, to do that. So yeah, she chose the Avengers Tower. Uh, not that they have. They really don't have any large DC sets with Lego, uh, or sorry, with uh, DC. The the big, the closest one would have been maybe the new. Was it the, the Mystery Goats here too? The Bat Tumbler was. Is that what it's called? The Tumbler, the mm-hmm. big vehicle. I don't know if it's a new one or an older one, but they did have that one at, at the store. Didn't they have a Bat Cave at one point in time? Yeah, they did. They did have a Bat Cave. They did. My problem with Lego uh, sets is where you build them. Where are you going to put them? Where are they right. going to go? Like how, where, how, how is this going to work? We'll figure it out. Well, once, once things are built, we'll figure it out. I think. Uh, well, anyway, Glenda, no, that's, I, I, I are you going to be putting it? You don't know where you're putting it or did you say you did, did know where you're putting I it? I think I've got a pretty good idea where I'm going to put it in the other room. I can tell you where to put it. Hmm. I bet you can. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I was trying to time that with Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Almost had him this close, this close. Gonna make milk shoot out his nose and he's not drinking milk. <laughs> Just about uh, though. That was uh, that, that could I mean yeah, you were close. <laughs> yeah. hmm Could you imagine that would have been amazing? Josh, why did why didn't you do it? Do it for the clip. Do it for the I, you YouTube. Know, <clears throat> my brain was processing that just a little too slowly, I think. Well, what are you drinking there then? <laughs> what are you what are you on? Uh well, I just started drinking it, so I you know, I'm obviously already feeling it because I You're haven't been hammered. <laughs> Take, I've taken three sips, so I'm clearly <laughs> strong stuff there. It's like yeah, 20%. you're out. You're Is uncontrollable. It a 20% there? Yeah. No, it's a 7.2 percent. It's a that hazy uh, IPA. So I'm I'm on a uh, it's an IPA double IPA. It's a it's like it's become my go to a bit the Big Ballard. One of the big, um, what's the label? Big Ballard is, is the name, but I can't, I can't remember the label right now. Local, local brewery. Oh, Ballard good. is a local cool. neighborhood ah, in Seattle. Ah, we got a comment here um, from uh, hey, uh, Brit. Brit. Brit's here, and I'm having difficulties with. Oh, my God. Chris. Hey, hey, Brit. We're <laughs> professional streamers here. There? <laughs> and um, so glad we're doing this live. Yes. I'm so, this is. This is great. Yeah, this is. Uh, it's a I, good I got, I got <laughs> thrown off. Um, hey Brad, please, why please. don't you throw up your uh, your blast voice there on the screen for a second? Yeah. I oh my god! Yeah, it you out. all have to see this. You got somebody gonna calling freak. it out. She's gonna freak. This is so. Watch cool. you freak out. He's gonna throw his back out trying to pick it up. You know, you know, Britt and I are connected in the sense that I mentioned her name on LinkedIn on e- one of Ian Douglas's posts because he had a squirrel something. I said, did you tell Brit? I didn't tag Brit, but Brit liked the comment, like my comment. <laughs> that's a, so uh, Brit's into squirrels. Well, maybe not. That's not her thing, but like squirrel sighting, squirrels. <laughs> today. So anytime I see a squirrel, that's that's Brit is automatically top. This is not a squirrel. This is no. this is a uh, Blastoise. 
This is Blastoise, yeah. Uh, Tinker wow. Toy, thank you so much for the uh, super chat here. Yeah, there so we go. This, this guy is 24 inches tall, 24 and a half inches wide, and just under 30 pounds. So am All I, right. by the way. That's about my size. <laughs> yeah. Gotta, dude, you don't get that was a I got a chuckle out of Glendon. That's <laughs> it's hard to get a usually you get a smile, a pass. That was a good chortle there. I got a yeah. chortle. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Uh, ninja there. turtle. It does kind of look ninja turtle-ish. A bit, yeah. How long and hey, again, uh, I know you showcased it last week, but how long did that take you? Total print time uh for me was 20 and a half days. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I printed while. something for a, a friend and and I said, Oh, it's only gonna take four hours. She's like, Oh my god. I'm like, no, no, like you don't understand. That's like nothing. Like an hour <laughs> might be or, I'm sorry, hours nothing, but like a day might be a lot for me. So 20 days, I mean a lot of different pieces, and you use 3D gloop to 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 get it all together. I or did, I have yeah. people I have the same thing. I have people that that bulk it like i say like oh that might take that might be i have to figure that out how to do that no like, oh never mind if it's going to take a lot to figure it. no it's like no that's part it's of it nothing. that's part yeah, of why yeah. i like to do this yeah. right yep. it's funny we're all and everybody here tonight is uh we're into 3d printing and at least for two of you i think we pulled josh into 3d printing i think that was a group effort but i pulled Kicking and into screaming 3D man i just if there's a it's, yeah, I know. If there's a, a three, a, if, I almost thought that was a beer at first. I'm like, Gloop, what's that? Is that an IPA? Is yeah. that an Imperial? Is that an <laughs> we Imperial? called it Gloop? out. There it is. That, that's the adhesive. That it me. is. Glue is the adhesive. It is. Yes. It, it brings us together. Beer is it my glue. Us. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers with your. Mm. <laughs> Glennon, you're missing that's, out here. Gets the timing. Timing. I'm not you're drinking a beer tonight. Me, uh, I'm just what? Sorry. What? No. Uh, man. Okay, fine. Don't Somebody don't then, to like, drive don't. this thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I, I have a problem thinking and driving, let alone you know drinking yeah, and staying. Yeah, right. I love it with uh, I love it when people you know tell me they're doing something and I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna sit. I'm good. Mm -hmm. You be active. You do your thing. Yeah. I realized that came out of nowhere because in my mind I was <laughs> I. There were this two conversations going on. Oh my god, <laughs> you have no idea. This is really good. <laughs> This was this was what they call an effective beer. Wait, where are we? What are we doing? Well, who are you? Are what we live? Hell? Are we on YouTube? <laughs> oh, I thought we were on Twitch. Oops. Uh. Actually, we are on Twitch, although uh, simulcasting on a different uh, Streamyard conduit. Uh, I am. I, Brit is. This is okay, y'all. Brit's comment is the comment. The under under comment. What's the understatement? Understated comment of the year. Chris right. is working through some. I am working through some stuff. <laughs> I am definitely working through some stuff and trying to process this stuff. And every day that stuff pile gets stuffier and stuffier. So the less I can unstuff, the less, the more I can unstuff myself, the happier I am. And, and you know, well until said. It, you know, well, well said. said. Thank, well thank, said. Was that was that poignant? I wasn't sure yeah. where I was going with it, but yeah. did, did I stick the landing? You landed it. Did I? Yep. Did I do you that? I give it an eight. I give it an eight. Myself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good to know. Yeah. Uh, 3D printer. Yes, it is. It is like lava, and I. This is the reason you don't see me touching the floor because the floor over here is lava. Oh wait, mm. you said 2D printer. No, 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 no. Now you're gonna get me off on a tear. That is a good okay. beer. This, this is no. It, it's a good beer, but not. There's not a beer strong enough in the world to get me to buy a 2D printer. Ever. I am done. Wait, so do you print your like documents with a 3D printer? You just use the I would just... rather I would rather lithophane <laughs> <laughs> in 3D printing parlance, right? Oh, oh, I'd show you one. I'm not gonna show you all okay. All all you all the people who I count as my friends, you can DM me and I will show you this lithophane. This is not for public can, this uh, this lithophane is on my desk and it's been on my desk for about a month. And it's there for a reason. If I know you, this lithophane, I will show you this lithophane. So you can DM me. You can message me on X or, or Discord where we're probably connected. And you can message. I'm like, Chris, what's that lithophane? And I'll show you. And trust me, if I know you, you already will understand what this lithophane is about. So a lithophane, uh, and, and Glenda could probably do a better job explaining it, is... Uh, 
uh, basically a, potentially a 3D printed object that if you shine light from behind it, it'll it'll a picture will will basically show up front. I'm not going to show this because unfortunately it's 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 a bit private. Um, I don't have another lithophane a lithophane offhand, but I would rather print a lithophane of a document than use a 2D printer, a traditional printer. They're garbage. They're absolute trash. By the way, I just want to I just want to clear something up, just in case you're wondering. It's not, it's not anything inappropriate. I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> it's it's not inappropriate. <laughs> it's just very private. Okay, and yeah. it's very very much tied to my journey right now. It's not vulgar though, it, right? It's not it's like very vulgar, <laughs> but it's not. It's not. You know, you're not helping Josh. That's you're not Chris helping the details. cause at all. Yeah. Oh, here. How can I? Here, I'll give you. A, see, can you see the word "person" there? Yeah. Okay, person. There, there you go. You're, that's your clue. Person. That's the only clue you get. So, it's a text message from somebody. Got it. Okay. That will be preserved. Got it. Ad infinitum as a reminder. And uh, so you can message me <laughs> to learn yeah, more about that lithophane. And I'll shine the light through and everything going. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I would rather do, I would rather explain what a lithophane is than spend $5 on a 2D printer. So yeah, I gave up on 2D printing. This was a rant I did maybe a year or so ago. Um, maybe close to 10 years ago. I just got tired of it. I'm like, you know, it's just the, the ink or the toner was just a waste and it, you know, problems. The thing that put me over the edge with 2d printing, I was able to outsource my printing. I've got like a, you know, not a UPS store, but something like not, not a FedEx Kinko's or whatever, but something like that. And I can send PDFs there and have them printed out. So I've done that. Uh, easier to do it that way, even if it costs more. Uh, and it generally doesn't, it's, it's pennies on the dollar for each print or each page. The security issues with those printers, even with printers that might be managed locally on one machine, which becomes a different kind of pain in the ass. It was just so tedious and so worrisome that I'm like, I'm not going to put anything on a network. I basically, I'm not a, I'm not, you know, a gun owner at this point. Uh, but if, if I had a printer, I would become a gun owner. And if that thing made a funny noise, I'd shoot it. So wow. that's that's how I feel about printers. Mm. I don't I I don't trust them as far as I could throw them, and I can't well, throw them very far because I'm. Here's the good news: our printer is connected to the network, <laughs> but I can't get the damn dang thing to work even when we send things to it. So that's what I'm saying. They're they're, they're, they're the worst. Though so we're talking about all this smart technology, why doesn't someone? Why doesn't one of these companies? I can tell you why putting on a tinfoil hat they don't invent a printer that actually doesn't suck because the entire model around printing 2d printing is to make the experience suck it's expensive it doesn't work the security profile is garbage it's 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 junk and they know They've got a captive audience. Well, people are going to buy printers. What are you going to do? Like you play like Josh. What are you going to do? Not print. Yeah. Watch me not print. <laughs> Why is I everything you're saying directed at house. me tonight? Dude, this house. I I mean, I don't tolerate a lot of stuff. I will let my daughter drop the F-bomb. But I will not allow a printer that isn't 3D in this house. Not going to happen. That's that my boundary. Gonna have... I, you got to set your boundaries, man. People got to know where your boundaries are. I don't care if my daughter, daughter, damn, this is a good beer. <laughs> uh, I don't care if she drops an F-bomb as long as she uses it in context. If she doesn't use it in context, we're going to have words. Like, no, no, no. You got to use it correctly. Use it correctly. So I'm not worried when right. the school calls and said, you know, she dropped the F-bomb. Did she use it in context? Yes. How did she use it? Was it appropriate? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Chris is going to have the argument with them. Like, if it was used oh, right, I will. Then... <laughs> you're, you're effing right, I will. You're effing right. That's I'm not awesome. going to do it here because YouTube demonetization. Oh, last thing we want to do is say the word that everybody says when the video's not going. Yep. So, yeah, you know, I, I we all have different boundaries. But, yeah, 2D, 2D printer, you bring up 2D. Um, it's, it's so out of, out of sight, out of mind. And maybe I, I, I'm guessing in this stunted version of Hollywood squares that we got going on here, I'm the only one who doesn't have a 2d printer, correct? Do y'all have 2d? Yeah. I, I don't have one. Really? No. Okay. Toxic's got one. I assume. Toxic. Josh what, what printer is that? It's a brother the, laser mother, a yeah. mother. Did you say a mother? What? 
Yeah, brother. Um, um, our or, our printers mother, are brothers. Brother. A brother. Our effort? printers are bros. Toxic. Yeah. Yeah, you got a brother okay. too. Dude, I got a brother you too. Know, when you're when you're when your printers are like bonding like that, it's a problem. I'm just saying. Yeah. It's for at least they work. Well, really, I would argue when and maybe you know more about networking than than I think the average person. I would put that thing on its own. I would get a dedicated ISP for that printer. I wouldn't. <laughs> I even segmenting the the network. I just don't trust those things at all. And even the ones that aren't connected to the network. Again, it's the model, the business model. That's what's broken. It's not the printer. It's not the need for the printer. It's the it's the uh, it, it's it, it's a garbage ecosystem, and they all know it. They know it. It's it's slathered in DRM and craptastic software. I just life's too short for 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 garbage software. That's my I, opinion. That's why I don't use iOS anymore. I think we're. Oh my gosh! Sorry, Matt, Josh. Oh, now happen. you that now can has been open now. now. Done it. No, I was going to say we're using the wrong substance for this <laughs> conversation. I feel like, man, the whole two day printer thing, man. The cons it's a conspiracy. It's a whole cons the whole thing. And well, it, really it is, is legal man. in the state of Washington. Uh, what you're talking about? Not. Pr <laughs> I wish print two D printers were illegal in the state of Washington. My yeah. life would be better <laughs> off for it. I'm yeah. serious. I'm not saying there's going to be a class action or a government action, you know, the uh, consumer affairs agency, whatever government person has to come in and say, attorney general has got to come in. Yeah. 2d printers suck. They just suck. I, I, I've yeah, yet to, I agree. You know, I've never I had mean, one that worked well and was not expensive to upkeep and was not reliable. So yeah, I know. I, I, I was actually, I was actually no, amazed at work. When we when I got this bamboo A1 mini, I was amazed because I was like, this printer works better than the 2D printer, any 2D printer I've had. That's like, what I'm saying. It's wild. That's what I'm saying. It's it's yeah. I mean, 3D printing is not without its I mean, I've had a couple of prints recently fail for one reason or another. Um, but I've had quote unquote paper prints uh fail for one reason or another. <laughs> it's 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 something that I learned to live without. And just pulled away from phantom printer notes, craptastic software. Are we talking about Android again? Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm not going to go off the chair because I've already dominated. Yeah. We steered the conversation. Uh, it wasn't my fault, though, was it? Josh. No, I don't think it was. You. I don't think it was you. Uh, we had a comment earlier. 2D. Was it you? You said 2D printer. Someone. That was someone in all, comments did. Yeah. I, I, one of the comments said 2D printer when, when I, I think we were talking about 3D printing and the deburring tool, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I didn't mind a laser printer when I had it. Laser. It was it was okay. fine. I didn't mind it. It was just uh it was just tedious. And I just found that it was it was more of a an albatross than a boon. Oh, by Actually, the way, uh, the, the, the deburring process with paper prints never worked well for me either when you use the lighter to try and do it. No, like, that it just, just goes right up in flames. You gotta hold the flame thing. a bit further away. Yeah, it just doesn't work yeah. that well. Yeah. No, it doesn't. You don't want to use that for it. In inappropriate use of the tool, I'll mm -hmm. say that. Uh, okay, I, I will. I will do my best to rerail us. Although I'm not going to promise not to derail us again. Uh, toxic. Do you have anything new to showcase this week? So, new or old? I mean, something that you want to share. New like, to you. Yeah. Go and tell. This is new to me. I after the podcast last week, I did do, display this on stream just to do an unboxing. But I did buy and finally, well, I pre-ordered. This finally came in. Was the Star Trek card. Uh, Legacy Collection. The reason why I picked this one up is it was actually cheaper to buy this set uh, that came with a book, amongst other things. Uh, but all three seasons of Picard, plus the next generation on Blu-ray, uh, plus a couple other things. Like, you got some playing cards and some Chateau Picard. Let me turn this light off. Oh, they only give go. you a coaster? Like, they why wouldn't they, like, include, like, an actual bottle? Yeah, they give you four yeah, coasters. No, there's right? no, you there's know what no I'm bottom. saying? That would be actually. I would. I mean, I gotta admit, <laughs> I would probably. I would get. I would. I would nerd out. Uh, I would get a Chateau Picard. Bot. I would. Do they sell it? Oh my god! Hang on. I they gotta, might. I gotta <laughs> Google this. So I gotta know. The, these are the uh, the next gen Blu-rays, and then the uh, Star Trek Picard Legacy uh, Blu-rays, and then it also comes with a legacy collection with like screenshots and just other things from the show 
The cool. reason why I got this was, again, because the price of buying this bundle was cheaper than buying just the Blu-rays of Star Trek Picard, at least when I pre-ordered it, because the third season of Picard was almost $60, and when I pre-ordered this, it was, uh, I'd have to look it up, I think it was like 160 bucks, which just even for the Blu-rays of Next Gen was, again, just thrown in there, so it what? was cheaper buying it this way. Is Goat here? Is go I, yep. I assume Goat's got to be here. Um, he said he loves it and hates it. So, uh, well, because it's Picard. Season one and two were garbage. Um, yeah. I, I I googled it and there is Star Trek wines. This is not a clearly not a, the only sponsor we have is Streamyard, uh, but there is. I'm, I'm a, <laughs> what was illegal in the Federation is now available. I wonder if there's Romulan ale. Uh, there's got to be. But look at the you go go to the. Google it or Bing it, you know, if you're the, the one doofus who uses Bing. Um, <laughs> Star Trek Wines. And they actually have, right now, Chateau Picard, tw 2401 Silver Edition, Wrath of Khan 40th Anniversary Cabernet Sauvignon. I may actually get a couple of those because I love a good Sauvignon. Uh, wow, a good cab. Uh, yeah, Andorian Blue, Cardassian Red, and Horizon... A couple of horizons, but the bottle. See this to me. The bottle. The, oh the bottles are the. That's the collectible. It's forget the wine itself. It's the bottle that's that would have me say. going. But so I, yeah, I, this might. I. Uh, you may have taken me down. You Clean may have blood me to, uh, to get this. Wow, that's pretty right. A hundred percent sure that this wine is going to be average to awful. Yeah, so just plan on because I'm looking at their bundles right now. Like five hundred dollars for twelve bottles, which I mean, no, I wouldn't that, spend. That. I mean, unless I was like oh. a true Trekkie, I don't think I could go that far. Oh. Yeah, interesting. Phantom notes that you're right on about retro gaming last week, so he heard what you were saying from the podcast. Oh, nice. uh, Toxic. Yeah. We ended up going yeah. off on a tear with that one. <laughs> uh, oh, there's a Klingon blood wine at one point. Oh man, I'm almost scared. Mm. I would be scared. To try that one, that and the Romulan yeah. ale. From what I, I mean, how are they <laughs> going to make it, right? But it's just like, <clears throat> I, I don't know. I would love to try some synthahol. That would be pretty neat. I mean, even though it, it wouldn't be true, it would be alcohol. As in, couldn't drink too much of it. That'd be pretty cool. Andrew, uh, aka Silver Sunbeam, buy some two buck Chuck and soak the labels off. Make your own. There labels. you so, go. Yeah. It's not collecting. It's the exact same thing. Well, what are you that'd talking be like, about? No, that'd be like <laughs> Glendon getting. That'd be like Glendon, Glendon finding a JPEG of Superman and printing it off on a 2D printer that he doesn't have, and then saying, right. "Look, I got a, I got yeah. a Superman print." Yeah, that's Different. garbage. Nobody wants. Yeah, that. no one wants. Some people, uh, but like, yeah, no, it's not. It's not the same. That's the that's the collector in me. That's me saying, "Yes, that's real. That's from Chateau Picard in the future." I have a DeLorean. Not really. I don't have a DeLorean. I'm curious. Oh. It doesn't say who. Makes what are you the looking wine. for? I'm trying to yeah, figure out. Yeah, I was who just makes wondering that. Oh, it's got. Yeah, it's it's definitely a clearly a, a really It's a blend. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I but I am not a connoisseur, a snob, a wine snob. I'm a coffee snob. Uh, uh, so I, <laughs> clearly a beer was, a beer you know, enthusiast. The thing about that is, <laughs> you're not gonna believe it. I. Love, love boxed wine. It's the best. <laughs> slap the bag, huh? You like I will slap just the bag? squeeze it out like the life. You squeeze it out. So yeah, I, I drink boxed wine. So obviously, I'm not. I don't care. It could taste like you know what it tastes like, and oh yeah, it's definitely a red wine. I don't. I, I and maybe it's because I've not been spoiled, and I hope I never am. It's kind of like yeah, I like coffee because you had crap coffee, and then you have like a good coffee, and you're like. Everything else is swill by comparison. So I don't know if I've ever been, maybe once or twice have been, it's like me in, in, in audio, right? Or me in video. Yes, I've been spoiled by 4K. Yes, I've been spoiled by high bit rate uh, audio, but I can, I can listen to a low bit rate audio file and enjoy it just as much. I don't have, I don't have the palette for audio, video, and I guess wine, or red wine, uh, in particular, apart from ones that, you know, you, you drink and then they smell like feet afterwards. I've had those. Those are not good wines. Feet wines. Mm. I mean, I don't know if they still do the stomping of the, 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 the with the grapes, with the feet and everything. These are, are my you feet. talking about barefoot wines. Yeah. 
no, 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 actual, not the label. No, barefoot no, no. wine is an actual wine. No, he's talking talking about no, like stomping. actual physical stomping of the with the grapes with the feet. That's some oh. sometimes uh, in my experience, a a bad red wine will taste like you know have this this scent of this. Am I using the right word? Pecan. This um this bouquet of feet of armpit. Yeah, it's it's there. There's something some boxed or bottled. Like I've definitely had some skanky wines. That's I think that's the label I'm going to go with. There. I'm wine. not an actual skank. Don't go by. Oh, I'm going to try the skanky wines. What I didn't the store didn't have skanky wines. No, I'm saying they <laughs> they taste like. <laughs> Where Sorry. the hell is this podcast going? I don't know. <laughs> I it's, not, it's really just oozing out of him tonight. You know Skanky what? I really wines. think, but I think to be honest, like all they need to do with boxed wine is put it into juice boxes. Cause then how much better would that be? With a oh. straw. With a with straw. Like a, a pack a my lunch and take it to work. Yeah. Like, I think they're, they're trying to go the wrong direction with box wines. They're trying to make it seem like nice wine. They should go the other direction and make it seem like what it is. Like, well, just... I think box wines are fine. It's, it, I think they've got a, a, a bad rep, but um, I think they're okay. I just, I mean, the thing I like about it is you can have a single serving, right? And just like, oh, have a little sip of it. I had, yeah. I had someone take more than, right, hang on just a second. Jedi, you good? Okay. Um, Jedi's here. Uh, I had someone take from my boxed wine once. <laughs> You're going to love this. I kid you not. Take, I had boxed wine. I had enough of it. I'm like, okay, it's fine. It's there. But... <laughs> I laugh just thinking about it. Just seriously, I had enough, right? I'm like, okay, there's enough there. I go to use it again in, in like two weeks or whatever it was, and it comes out water, like pink water. This is like it would have been a cab, like a thick red. Just it comes out water. I'm like, why? Why is the why is the wine turned into water? Like, is there <laughs> is there is the are you the antichrist? What the. F like what like happened? Fake Jesus, man. What, the Antichrist <laughs> basically turned wine into water, and I'm like, going what? And for those of you who know me, like, you can you can ask about this lithophane, and you can also ask me who this happened with, and I will tell you, God's honest truth. It was watered down. I'm like, what? What? I'm like going, shaking it up. I'm like, did it? Wine doesn't settle that way. You might get <laughs> sediment, but I'm like, maybe I'm like, like there's enough here, but it came, it, it came out lighter than a rosé, right? It, it, and it was, it was a, it was a Syrah. It was a cab. It was a thick, it was a red. Like it was like, not, maybe not like a blood wine. Not that I've seen one in person, but it came out so watered down and water was like leaking out. And I'm Chris, like, I keep telling you, you got to stop using so much ice in your drinks. But okay. But here's the thing. Like it was just, it was just done. So Someone using boxed wine, drank the wine from the boxed wine and thought they were smart enough to replace that wine with water through an output spigot. Oh and no. And so they tried to get the water to go in. <laughs> so this was stupid on so many levels. The stupidity, the absolute stupidity of this individual. I'll never forget that story as long as I live. The stupidity, the pure, unadulterated. You almost have to admire the stupidity at that point. You really do. Like, how stupid are you? How stupid do you think somebody else is to think that you? I've always God, heard the stories of. Hey to God, it really happened. Wow. Yep. Yeah, I've, I've heard God. stories like this before. I I swear this is not the first time I'm hearing the story from somebody. Mm -hmm. Just so stupid. Not, uh, this is the first time I've heard it with wine, though. It with was wine. usually yeah. it's how liquor. You, how or something do you, like, like that, I but... get it. You're drinking the wine, right? But okay, you drank it. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and measure like, oh, it's 14 ounces. Now it's five. You know, I'm like, I'm not thinking that right. but to think to have so much of it you think oh he's gonna know i i drank the wine that he had set aside for him <laughs> to replace it with water and to try to get the water to go into an out to an output only there's just so many levels of stupid 
It was admiral. It was a, it was award winning Darwin level stupid, stupid, and he's just to the point where all you could do is laugh at how stupid it was. It was so stupid. It was so stupid. So anyway, that's my that's my that's my that's my anecdote on uh, on boxed wine and, and the experience. Uh, not that you asked for that, but I just thought it was funny. I thought it was stupid funny. I'm a, I'm the only one laughing at this point because it was so. <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm just not laughing audibly. <laughs> oh, you're laughing in your heart. Are you pulling yeah. that COVID yeah, thing, screaming you know. in your heart? <laughs> scream in your. Isn't that what they use? There was a roller coaster somewhere in Japan. I think a scream in your heart or scream with your heart to keep people from yelling. Um. Uh. So anyway, I where the. I am so sorry we went off that tear. I, I, I promised to rerail us. Uh, thank you, Toxic, for get, you got. I will blame you for the Star Trek thing. That's fine. getting me thinking about wines. Yep. I'll figure. I, I'll figure our path forward. We haven't even gotten to the tech talk yet. We're not even there. We're not even close. No. We we've only begun to stupid around here. Uh, Josh. Yes. Do you have uh, anything that can top any of that? Well, I don't know if we can top any of that, but it's oddly in line with some of what you guys were talking about, and I didn't think it would be. I thought I was completely out of left field, which I still think I am, because I don't actually have an object to show or anything, but I have discovered something. Have you guys ever heard of, um, oh, what do they call it? They There's a, uh, the players are on the field and they have a ball and they, football. I discovered football. Oh. Are you being facetious? You, I know you're being, now you're pulling my leg. You discovered it. <laughs> no, he's really telling the truth. He's I'm actually, watching Super okay, football. I made a joke about getting to getting to the subject, but the discovery of football <laughs> itself is real. I'm 38 years old. I'm just starting to figure out that I like watching football games. Wait, how did you come around? By the way, uh, Silver, thank you so much for the box wine fund. I don't know. There's no recovering. That. <laughs> <laughs> there's no recovery for that. That we, that ship has that ship has sailed. Uh, no. Suffice it to say that I'm I, I I'm no longer in that person's orbit. So also, ten dollars should wine. more than cover it. I'm sure Yo, easily. That that's like yeah. ten boxed wines around here. Right, right. The good box wine is like a dollar. Uh, so really, you figure you, you what what brought you around to uh, f I assume Mer American football? Yeah, American football. Well, first of all, uh, European football is interesting to me too on a whole nother level because of uh, oh my gosh, I just committed the cardinal sin. A whole nother, another hole. I hate it when people say a whole nother. I it I bugs me that. to no end. Another hole. What about subject? What what about espresso? Oh, I hate that too. That drives Actually, me nuts. Oh, yeah. I hate that. I hate yeah. What that. about when you say literally? When you mean figuratively i um, my my head literally exploded that one doesn't bug me as much shut up so <laughs> wait hang on so i say my head literally, literally on a whole nother level wait hang on. no <laughs> I, stopped, I stomped over you say that again i stomped over you and you had the perfect delivery yeah so the, the that espresso is on a whole nother level god i hate <clears> you <throat> all i just wanted him to repeat it just to piss you off yeah, Expresso. no, clearly. EX. Gosh. Anyway. So, so wait, what, anyway, what football, was it? What football, was the beer, and such. That so, okay, you so into the, hand the impetus was my parents were here visiting for a couple weeks, and it just so happened that my their, their visit coincided with when the Detroit Lions, which I'm from Michigan, so the Lions, I, I grew up with the Lions being a terrible team and being around it and not understanding much of the game, not really caring because our team was just so bad. Uh, I even worked in sports radio, by the way, for quite a while. And I still didn't really, I mean, I kind of did a little bit, got into it. But we went to a game because uh, the Detroit Lions happened to be playing the Chargers here in Los Angeles when my parents were visiting. So you we went to the game. You know an awful lot for not knowing an awful lot, Josh. I'm just going to, I I, I got to say, you're like, laying, you're, I, you're like, you know more. I think you're lying to us, dude. I think you know no, everything. No, I'm not about lying. Football. I don't know really how the game works really? that well. Really? Because you're naming this, that, and the other thing, and our team's not that great. So how the hell, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to call BS on this one. <laughs> These are not specifics, Chris. These are not specifics. No. Nah. Nah, well, now, well, great. Nah. Now I'm in this weird between space. You're in the end zone that now. Love buddy. sports and people that are actually. Just... Hang on. Do you have a sock? Can I see your sock? Can you can you take off your sock, Jedi, for a second? Yeah, hang I on, Josh. Just a second, because I don't have my socks oh. on. 
Hang on. Okay. Flag. I'm, there's a flag on the play. <laughs> there's a Penalty. flag on the play. You know yards. about flags. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Penalty. Ten yards. That's the that's the hand signal. Okay, you put your sock back on. Thank you for the prop. Um. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you there's, caused that, Josh. I know I did. That's my fault. That's on wow. you. So, so yeah, I've just, uh, we went to the game. We went to the, the Lions Chargers game and going physically to the game was like an eye-opening experience about how much, I didn't expect it to be that much fun. Okay, going to the game. So I will say this, and I remember going to a couple of f college football games. I almost college said college football, football games. Uh, yeah. The uh, This is good beer. Um, this is a great not boxed wine. So going to a game, I do feel is a different experience though than watching it, let's say on TV or listening on radio. I'll say that. Yeah. I think I think just the camaraderie among fans too, because in in mm -hmm. the stands, it, it, in the stadium we were at at SoFi, it was literally split like 50-50 Lions and Chargers fans. It was so cool. So like I was walking down, I was like, anytime I saw someone with a Lions jersey on, I'd be like Lions, and they'd be like, yeah, you know, it's like that's fun. Do we hang on? Do you do the same fun. thing when you're like walking down the road? Android, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, iPhone, <laughs> woo, I team try app. that. Do I gotta that. try that. Who does that? I gotta Who try. Who does that? that? Josh I gotta gonna I'll, try. I'm Josh gonna try. Will. You you think I'm joking? I'm gonna try it. Next time I see someone walking by with an iPhone, I'm gonna go iPhone, Woo! and they're gonna be like, "I'm gonna do it." I'm gonna. I swear to God. Woo! You use an iPhone. Woo! Yeah. Team Batman. Woo! Yeah, it's gonna Team be fun. PC, go Mac, go Mac, or go home. Woo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need do it in the Apple know, Store. I need two yeah, other yeah, people. Yeah. I need Definitely. two other people to come with me to the Apple Store with no shirts, with, with body paint. painted. We got the Pete Apple logo painted on our face. Woo! Got woo! cooking, cooking with Tim. You know, woo! Yeah. <laughs> big, big signs. You know, like Black yeah! Friday next year. iPods. Woo! But but I but in a serious note though, I think my whole life I've literally had a block on sports because I was kind of in the geeky nerdy group in school, and so anything sports related always was like, oh, that's the jocks. Those are people that aren't my people. I was, I was, I, I held on to that for a very long time. And so now I'm finally coming around to like, oh, you know, I could, I can, there's nothing preventing me from, if I want to watch a game and I actually enjoy it, like that's fine. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's I nothing mean, I, against that. And I, yeah, I and, wouldn't, I, yeah, I wouldn't. And I actually think in also from a broadcasting point of view, cause I, I come from the broadcast world seeing what they, how these broadcasts, how much of a production they are. And they're, they're so taken for granted. All the things happening, all the camera angles, all of the, the graphics, all of the, all of that stuff is just, and the announcers being able to call the game as they happen is amazing to me too, because it's like, how do they process all that so quickly and deliver it? It's, it's well, really, the whole that, thing though, is really fascinating. With Apple announcements or like Andrew, like, well, he's talking about this and that's a this and this and this and that and this and that. It's the same kind of thing. I guess so. For, for I guess you're right. Yep. I know. I, I think it just amazes me because I've play so I've been haven't been like in it for so long. Like I've been so anyway. I, I think that's my my discovery is that like yeah. I, and then and then that's a whole other thing too. When you're talking about fandom too between Marvel and DC, it's like okay, well if I'm a fan of this Detroit team, but they're playing another. They're playing like a San Francisco team, and I was in the Bay Area for seven years, so like I'm kind of like attached to that area too. Or like if there's a player that got traded to another team, it's like it gets really hard to figure out like who am I rooting for. Anymore? See, that's why I just don't just don't engage, don't encourage it. Ugh. I think sports is a fad. People, it's so it's, it's fad. It'll go away. It's a fa <laughs> It's a phase in life. Yeah, uh -huh. and they'll grow out of it. How long of a phase do you think it is? Like a hundred years or hundred fifty? I I think it's a phase long enough that a a, a Muppet is going to start. A Muppet needs to get a little taller though, because the Muppet is not in view of the camera. Oh, there we go. And <laughs> just so everyone knows. Yeah, he doesn't. Have, he doesn't have. He's a very Chris Perlo. He doesn't have very long legs. Right. This is how. This is how tall Chris Perlo is without his platform shoes. Yeah. Sports will stunt your growth. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you don't like sports. You are Chris boy. You, I thought you'd be fake, but this is a real Chris Pearl. He doesn't like sports. This is, that's how, but seriously, he just must be, it must be this tall to like sports. He doesn't quite me measure up to that. To so that, you know, honestly, Josh, you know, even, even coming around to that is, is pretty amazing. Cause it, having to be serious, I think that it's admirable to believe you didn't like something only to come around to realizing, Oh, 
yeah, this is actually this is something that that, that you, you you could do for you know yeah. however you choose to enjoy one thing or another. It That's just actually feels like a gross. big yeah. It does feel like a big shift in like my whole like because I, I I've never been and I still am not an expert. Like I could I couldn't break down plays and 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 all that stuff. But I mean, I don't think you have to. I always thought like you either are. You have to be a complete expert on everything or you're just not at all. You're just laughed out of the room. And I feel like there's there's definitely some some gray area there where you can get yeah. some enjoyment there's out of it. Fair weather fans. Yeah. Oh, big time. Well, I don't want to be a fair weather fan either, though. That's like just liking a team because they're good, which I do feel guilty right. about because the Lions are doing better this season. So right. I wouldn't know. See, you know so much already. This is what I'm saying. This is what doesn't make any sense. <sighs> it does if you talk to me for 10 minutes about sports and it will just all fall apart. I'll be like, that play where that guy, he threw the ball the and it thing. went like down the field and then the other guy caught it and then he started running. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. That's how I explain things. Oh. Hang on, just I'm contending with Honey, what are you doing? I, I, I saw uh, Phantom's printer. Uh, where, where was this? Phantom printer? Here? About, yeah. yeah. Phantom printer. I'm talking about the Bengals fan. Uh, that's me. Right, Bengals fan. So mm -hmm. I, I printed this up. Uh, it's not oh, no. for him, but contextually, it's for him. And if you're friends with oh. Fox, oh. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's not. This is not related. I swear. I need to but... print one of those because I, I was. <laughs> I was gonna say if you're friends with Toxic and just DM him and he will show you what the hand does, but I guess we've already got. Uh, it. I've got it. I've got to print me one. Is that an, a, a free STL? Yeah, yeah, I'll send you. The you link. have to, yeah, you have to link it to me because I've been looking for things yeah. to to print that that I could use on the desk. Like, yeah, I, I could. You use can that. get a smaller one. I, I, this is the, like the biggest, you one of the biggest that I could get on the bamboo. So like, be bigger than I need a life size one. Oh, right? I, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's probably closer to life size. Life size, yeah, something bigger than that just seems like I'd be overcompensating. Like, you oh, want to make a statement? Great too, goat. What's that, Josh? <clears throat> hockey is great too, Goat. I actually came up, I think I was appreciated hockey more than any other sport for a long time. And then, uh, yeah, I so I, in the Mighty Ducks movies, <laughs> I loved those too, man. Yep. So much okay. sports ball talk tonight in the tech. Sorry. Talk. I know. I, I, I yeah, just I don't was, like I, it. I, I, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Is Chris Stop. is probably like just uh, yeah, itching over there. But. Sorry. Our, I, 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 Jed, I was saying that rocket pulled a couple of did were they were there bite marks on it I don't know. uh she pulled a, she she's used to getting into things because her treat her her bag of toys is uh, rockets our new dog and yeah. so she was getting into something that she should not have what yeah. there are yeah. okay can you hand them to me yeah. thank you are there no there doesn't seem to be bite marks yeah there is. no oh i see sorry i thought everything was wireless fine. in your it's house fine. chris no why would it not be? Wait, what? <laughs> it just went way up here. I, I went. It went way over my head. Um, just, just so on. she's been getting into bags. So hopefully she's not going to. Yeah, thank you, honey. Thank you. Because I don't want her getting into bags and pulling things out that she should not be. She's been getting into things that she should not be getting into. Which again, kind of. Yeah, you you've got a child proof a home. You also have to dog proof a home. Yep. So yeah, that's. Yep. Sorry, I was like. Try bird proofing rooms. Said, but, it's really hard. Yeah, big time. Big time. Uh, all right. So that's everybody's, um, I guess, new thing of the week that they're geeking out on. Uh, hang on, Jedi. We're, we're talking over here and they can't necessarily hear you or you can't hear them. So it's going to be difficult for you to engage. Uh, let's jump into our uh, the next part of this podcast, uh, this broadcast, which I'm, I'm very grateful to see uh, people participating in chat. Uh, the hope is, is again, every Monday, that's a, uh, we're trying to get into a regular cadence, a regular night, different people potentially uh, talking about whatever is on our radar, tech stuff, geek stuff, hanging outy stuff, um, and uh, trying to do it. This, this was a test this week, doing it live on YouTube. And I think, you know, we're, we're all having a good time. I, uh, I wanted to cover one thing, given that we just wrapped up yet another Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Uh, I think a lot of, what happens when it comes to um, sales? And there was actually a video someone had recorded like Target where they had the Black Friday deals, but if you pulled out the regular sale, it was the same price. It's just they labeled it Black Friday. It wasn't a sale. You have to know how to price something to know whether or not you're getting a good deal on it. And, you know, I've said the same thing too. And very often on, on my social feeds, 
Twitter, or sorry, X, uh, Mastodon, Threads, I'll post Lego discounts. Amazon very frequently will have uh, sales on, on Lego sets. And that's the time to buy a Lego set. Don't buy, I mean, you can buy a Lego set full price, uh, but I always say wait until they go on sale. If they do go on sale and then get them. So I usually wait until things go on sale. So I generally have a good idea of what a normal price is versus a quote unquote sale price. But I thought as far as tech goes, a lot of people, you know, will will turn to Black Friday to save money uh, on 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 technology. But there's more ways than just Black Friday to save money when it comes to technology. Uh, and and I don't just mean the use of technology, but specifically picking up technology. One way, and this is this is something that I think a lot of people skip, but at least Toxic has gone down this path as well as I'm sure other people who are watching. Glendon, maybe, although I'm not sure if you, you've talked about it extensively. Uh, thrifting tech or buying refurb. Like if it's not something that you, that is like mission critical or you can trust the source, you can often save a good chunk of change if it, if it doesn't need to be brand new. And if it's technology that's going to be used, I'm of the mindset that it's a tool. And who cares how many nails a hammer has pounded if the hammer still functions as a hammer? That's the way I look at, at a lot of the technology. So buying refurb can save you a lot. Some people would argue that maybe it's not the best idea for buying a thrifted product, a thr thrifted tech to specifically gift or re-gift, but that depends, right? If you, I mean, th I think outright, this is my, this is where my, my head goes, right? This is where, where my mind works. Like, let's say someone was into the technology, but didn't have the budget themselves. You would be able to get five times the amount of that technology for them thrifting smartly uh, and wisely uh, or buying refurb as opposed to, let's say your budget was a hundred dollars. Well, uh, if you, let's say you got five things for a hundred dollars versus one thing for a, one brand new thing for a hundred versus five of the things that they might've needed that were in good mint near mint condition, five of them for a hundred dollars, same budget, but you're able to stretch it five times. And I would argue that when you start packaging or stacking technology on top of technology to gift, uh, it becomes a value because it's more about the package. Kind of like uh, gift boxes are less, less about the one item and more about the uh, the combination of all the items. I would see the the thrifting or the purchasing of uh, uh, recycled or um, refurbs as, as the bigger value. The gift is the idea. The gift is the intent. So if you're going to buy for yourself, you can buy whatever, save money in refurb or sa save money in, in a thrifted product. But if you're going to buy with the intention of a gift, probably not a good gift to give, let's say, a used keyboard. But if it's, let's say, a used keyboard that's a good keyboard, great condition, that you've you've polished, you've cleaned up in combination with, uh, uh, let's say, a used SSD, in combination with a used monitor, in combination with a used this, that, and the other thing, same budget, but that person got an amazing array of upgrades all together. That's where I think people need to think differently uh, specifically about refurbs and gifting package it. Don't just buy it one off. And I, some people may disagree. No, you have to buy a brand new for a gift. I don't think if you package it and bundle it, I, I don't think it's going to, it, it's going to have the same impact. as just an individual used keyboard. That's kind of a, the intent is there, but not the intent of here is a package that I have curated for you that I have taken the time for, that I've cleaned up, that I've prepared, so that now you have an array of upgrades that you did not have before. So you still got to think about that person and you've got to take the extra effort, especially if it happens to be used. But it's a great way of saving money on, well, an array of things versus, again, I'm just throwing this number out there, $100 for one new product versus $100 for five new-ish products that pushes or propels them past where they might already be. So I feel that it, unfortunately, re, uh, or not regifting to a certain uh, extent, uh, but refurbs, buying refurbs or buying thrifting could save you a lot of money, even in gifting technology, but certainly in getting it for yourself. Uh, you got to shop around. That's kind of a, it, it, it goes without saying, but this is where you got to think, especially with impulse buys. And I'll kind of come back to impulse. Uh, you're, you're in a store and you see a sign. I refer to this example earlier. It's true. Wow. Normally the price is $10 and now it's marked down to, to five. That's amazing. But is it? Do you know how much that normally costs? Always double check. 
And in some cases it is, it may very well be a legitimate discount. In some cases it won't be, but don't be lured into the idea, even with special sales, like holiday sales, don't be lured into the idea that this is a great deal. If you don't check, you have this amazing tool at your disposal. And more often than not, you've probably got your smartphone on you. Use it, be smart, think through what that, that proposition is and whether or not it is a, a, a truly good deal shop around. Um, it doesn't pass the sniff test. And I'm going to take a, a tangent here, uh, but I feel still very relevant. I, what, uh, a I, tangent on this podcast. Okay. It's more of a cosine, uh, but you know, bear with me. Okay. Uh, trig was not my thing, Josh. I, I don't math very well. So, uh, the, uh, that was, I realized that was like a layer deep than where you were going with it, but I, I did my best. I think so, but that's okay. I, go, go ahead. Add mode right now. Cause Jedi's doing things over. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I, uh, uh, there was a Facebook marketplace listing for for uh, uh, like Star Wars figures, right? And, but it replaced Star Wars figures with a PC or a monitor or some technology. And the, the deal was like really, really solid. I'm like, oh my God, this is really good. And, you know, said it was in the Seattle area, texted, uh, messaged him back. I'm like, but this is really good. Does it come from a non-smoking home? Asked all the questions. I'm like, this is great. Where are you? And then he mentioned a part, like a part of the the, the state that he, he wasn't, uh, uh, that he didn't originally list. He listed Spokane or he said Spokane as opposed to what he listed in Seattle. And I'm like, that didn't pass the sniff test. And I was like, all right, can I get proof? I'm going to go, this is a layer deep because you're talking about buying used technology, potentially over the Facebook marketplace. If the deal is too good to be true, you've got to verify, especially if it's a transaction that requires you to, to give them money before they're, before they're going to send it. This untrusted uh, uh, established connection you've made with them. So the next thing I thought was, this doesn't sound right. It's too the deal's too good to be, to be true. Uh, he he's saying that he's in a part of the state that is not where the original listing is suggesting, uh, and he gives me you know a way to 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 transact electronically without any type type of trust verification. So PayPal has friends and family or goods and services. He mentioned friends and family, so like a third red flag goes up. And so I said, can you can you verify that this is fresh? As in, he didn't just copy a JPEG from the internet or a series of JPEGs, but he can write down my name, date, take a picture against the collection so that I can go deeper into verifying that he's actually got the collection in front of him. Uh, and he said yes, but he didn't actually do it. Then, so all, my red, all the red flags were up. And this, by the way, again, applies to technology too, not just you know what I might have been searching for. And we're talking again about how, how to save money and I guess this is one le level deeper, how to save money without actually getting ripped off. Um, not, not 10 minutes later, I'm scrolling through my feed. Someone else in a, in a shared group had screenshot his profile and said, Hey, does anybody know who this guy is? He signed up for Facebook in 2023. He's got a lot of, you know, deals that are too good to be true. I'm like, Oh yeah, dude, this is a scam. Easily. It's a scam. It's very, very easy to fall for scams. If you don't take the time to think through what it is you're doing. You've got, it's like, you've got to recognize people for who they are, not necessarily for who they say they are. And this, like I said, it very much applies to buying things online where you can save money, but you can also waste it. If, of course you fall victim for a scam. Um, another, another way to <clears throat> save money with buying technology is getting rid of old ones. And I, I I'm a big believer and I, I realize that not everyone is this way, but, I've, I've probably gone overboard. I had so and that cables are horrible that you can't resell a cable. Even Apple cables are difficult to resell, if not impossible. But I, I ended up eliminating 90% of legacy cables around here. Couldn't sell it. Uh, but in the process, run across a, a couple of you know, older technologies, maybe some old speakers, Bluetooth speakers and, and different products that you just were no longer being used. I'm like, you know, someone else may see a benefit from this. It's a way to recoup costs uh, selling old electronics. And so it may not be a direct way of saving money with a new electronic or an electronic you want, but you're effectively trading. You're taking an electronic that you might have used at some point in the past that is now collecting dust. Turn that into cash. And when you turn it into the cash, you are then vicariously saving money on that future purchase. So you got you look around. Don't just think smartphone. Don't just think tablet. Don't just think PC or Mac. 
there are products that you have, like even cases. I, I will say I've had a great degree of luck selling older cases and older products that might have been complementary to products that are no longer fresh. There are people out there who have an older phone or an older tablet, and they're looking for something that may be uh, cheaper than the, wh what they may be able to find in a marketplace. Especially, and by I, the way, if you have an yeah. old Apple leather case, because they don't even they don't make those anymore. That might be worth something too. You, you know, you think about the things that you think are now worthless that might actually be worth something. And again, I say vicariously because you're going to be buying new technology, even if it's old technology. Uh, upcy upcycling is the wrong word. Recycling uh, and selling those products uh, in a way that you're not out money. So I, I mentioned Facebook Marketplace is just one option. That offer up is also something else you could use. So you don't have to worry about shipping and handling. And generally, you know, you could do a porch pickup or, or transact it in such a way that you're not losing money in, the, in, in trying to go bottom dollar with that sale to, to be able to make that sale. Uh, but selling old technology, I feel, especially for geeks, is something that they're not willing to do. They want to hold on to the tech. I, maybe y'all are different this way, but I'm the type of person that I, if I don't need it, it's gone. I'm getting rid of it with, with, with respect to technology with, with star Wars, I'll hold on to it forever. But, uh, with technology, it's no longer fresh for you, but you can recoup that cost and apply it to a new purchase or a refurb purchase to save you even more money. If you can't wait for a black Friday special or a cyber Monday deal, uh, or wait for something to come on, on, on uh, you know, to a discount, uh, another, you know, higher, level uh option or idea that may not be relevant for for everybody relevant uh sorry for tripping through that word but uh not buying current gen waiting a generation or two uh you can save a a, a good chunk of money uh but that's something that i feel uh, is not as maybe not as much fun but not upgrading every cycle if you're caught in that cycle uh and and recognizing that what you what you need is going to be different from what somebody else needs. And that takes you abstracting yourself from uh, keeping up with the Joneses. Some people are, are more willing to do that than others. They're more able to do that with others. But I would implore you, especially if you're looking to save money on technology, avoiding new whenever possible. Not always easy, especially with tech when you want to have the, the bleeding edge or be on the bleeding edge, have the cutting edge product. Uh, another one, and I think this is the last thing that I, I wanted to say as far as a, a suggestion for saving money when it comes to, to, to buying new technology. Uh, <clears throat> this applies because it's still a part of a budget if you do have a te new tech budget. Avoiding impulse purchases. Not always easy to do. It's easier for me to avoid an impulse purchase with technology than it is other things. I'll look at something going, ooh, that'd be really neat. But then I have to think, where's it going to fit? What am, am, is it just, am I going to use it once and then forget about it? This is one of the reasons why I have not you know, thrown myself into VR because I knew I'm going to use it once and then I'd forget about it. I'd sideline it. If I cannot think of a way that I'm going to integrate that tool, that technology into my life, into my processes, I sideline it. I mean, I was willing, coming back full circle to what I was talking about earlier, my, my, the, the deburring tool that I've been very, very happy with. I didn't know how I was going to use it, but it didn't cost that much to try. I'm like, okay, it was absolutely worth the money, if not more so. Uh, because I was able to work it into my routine, my my scenarios. And I feel technology should be the same way. I don't browse technology sections anymore. Technology, I view very much as a tool. It doesn't excite. I don't walk into the Apple store and get excited. I'm there for a reason. And maybe I'm an anomaly with technology, but it it saves me a lot of money to say, yeah, that'd be interesting to have, but do I need it? Like, oh, yeah, that cable... Might be a little faster, but is it a law of diminishing returns? Okay, do I need a new battery? Do I need? Do I want or do I need? And honey, baby, can you please turn on the lights again? Do I need to find something else for you to do? Okay. Uh, so that, I know your Jedi's trying to, by the way, she's trying to save us money by turning down the, she's listening. She's trying to save us money with electricity. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Problem is, is I'm so white that I, I look like I glow in the dark when the lights are out around me, which is not a good thing. So I'm not, I'm glowing in the dark. There are no other lights here. This is me. I, <laughs> this I is uh, Perillo's after hours live stream. It, yeah. it is very, it's yeah. become a very after hours. Uh, so, you know, I, and there are probably other suggestions on how to, uh, to, to save, you know, across the boards uh, board uh, with, with technology and buying or 
selling to with the intent to buy at some point in the future. Uh, Silver Sunbeam notes, uh, donating can be effective. You can, uh, you can write the value off on your taxes, which is like getting cash. That's what I'm saying. There are many ways to effectively recoup your costs rather than just buying new, buying new, buying new, and stockpiling that which has value and you have no emotional connection to. And maybe you do. Maybe you have an emotional connection to a mouse you no longer use. I'm not going to pass judgment. I personally do not. If I'm not using it and I contextualize tech as a tool, I'm done with it. I'm good. That saves me a lot of money by by eliminating a lot of those need, those perceived needs that might be wants, that might be rarely used wants. Nice to have, but don't absolutely need. So you know, getting rid of a lot of that can be a, a boon to your pocketbook. And like I said, I'm sure many of you out there, you know, listening live and maybe even the, the group here might have further thoughts on how to save money with tech, knowing that you need it, uh, but, but doing it in such a way that it doesn't always have to break the bank. So I don't know. So oh. those are some money, money suggests. I don't know how to frame that, but I just thought I was thinking like money because I was thinking black Friday and used products, et cetera. Sorry, Josh, mm -hmm. didn't mean to stomp over you. No, all I can think of is, is how much my geek nerd card would get taken if I was interested in sports and was buying old tech. Like, yeah, that would be a problem. Well, you, you, you can buy old tech and be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But both of those things combined, I'm not heading in a good direction. No, yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I take like sports, away. and I buy old tech. Okay. All right. Well, then, good. Uh, then, then that's the relief. What were you saying, Toxic? Uh, so, kind of diving into a way to save money into tech. Uh, I actually just got a gift for my sister uh, for for Christmas. She's a preschool teacher. She needed a new laptop. New to her. And again, it's very lightweight, office-oriented stuff. There's no you know, programming or anything like that. To save money, I just went out and got a off-lease uh, Dell laptop from Micro Center. Uh, it's a quad-core with hyper-threading, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, it was an i5. Uh, basically looks brand new, 250 bucks. Couldn't, couldn't beat it. If you go a little bit cheaper on just non-Black Friday deals, a lot of times the cheap laptops, the $200, $250 specials, they still come with platter drives inside of them. They're very mm -hmm. slow. So you get a cheap laptop, you know, get four, eight gigs of RAM, make sure it's not soldered in because some of the really cheap ones now have it soldered onto the motherboard. Mm. Uh, get some with uh, upgradable DIMMs. You can have a laptop with a two core with hyper threading, like an i3 or a quad core with hyper threading, AMD, Intel, whatever it may be, and an SSD. And for maybe 300 bucks, you'd have a decent office machine for a couple of years of use for cheap. So, and you've uh, drifted yeah. recently the, the iMac and the, you kind of brought yeah. that back to, well, I wouldn't say it's former glory, but yeah, close to it. Yeah. I, I probably will just sell that, but I mean, it runs fast. It's snappy. It doesn't run all of like the latest and greatest software just because of the operating system but you have the option of running windows on there. So yeah, it is an older dual core with hyper threading. Um, I think it was a core two duo. So it's, it's very old. Uh, but yeah, you upgrade the Ram to eight gigs of Ram dual core with hyper threading and SSD YouTube and everything still works fine on it. And to give that to, you know, a separate PC for your niece or nephew, or even a kid's room just to play around and click and point games. Perfect for that. And you can find them now at thrift stores for, like I found mine and Will found his, around 50 bucks. Can't you know, I wonder if uh, there is, as far as thrifting goes, right? Um, I wonder if there's a market for uh, buying and restoring the used equipment. Yes. Like for, is, mm -hmm. there, is there glenders? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I do it myself. Um, I've, I've given gifts before for thrifting or yard selling however you want to phrase it i've got a set of speakers right now that are in my room that i use on a daily basis they're a set of jbl l112s that i got at a, at a yard sale and i restored them 
I didn't have to do anything to the actual cabinet because the walnut was great on it. The, uh, no qualms about that whatsoever. But I went in and just did a little bit of maintenance, you know, changed the capacitors and reflowed some solder joints and refoamed the uh, the sub that was on there. And now it looks brand new. Literally, you can't tell a difference or hear a difference between this speaker that is 40 years old as opposed to something that's, you know, five years old. So there is a big market out there. If I wanted to flip those speakers, I bought them for $125 in a yard sale. I could sell them for over $1,200 right now. Wow. Yeah. Literally $1,200. You hear that? Literally. Mm. Literally. Literally. Not figuratively. That's a whole other number. I've got to get better at doing that. Oh, stop the whole nother thing. Gosh, darn it. I, you don't know how much of a pet peeve that is for me. It really is. By the way, but, yeah, I did not mean yeah. to slam people buying old tech because I'm actually looking right now at like how I could maybe try to buy an old Android phone maybe to have like, you know, an Android to be able to use a good Android phone that's maybe like a year old or so, you know. Mm -hmm. Why not? Exactly. Why not? I, know. I don't, you know, the funny thing is, I'm kind of surprised. I see it, and I don't go shopping for old tech thrifting. It's not, I, I usually go for toys and collectibles. Um, and I see a lot of, a lot of old technology, a lot, like copious amounts. But I don't see a lot of used, oddly enough, I don't see a lot of used smartphones. And I wonder if it's because people use, you know, services to send them in and, and, and recoup their costs. Um, surprisingly don't see a lot of used smartphones but even josh i gotta say like you talk about a smartphone an android even a new pixel a series yeah is reasonable like you're right very reasonable so finding a used pixel a series even like a recent gen like a you know six let's say six a seven a would get you a used right you know refurb um would actually not be i wouldn't hesitate giving that or you know pointing someone that direction a pixel specifically i think that the only thing i was worried about is 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 i want to be able to compare apples to apples so to speak whereas it would be on the level of hardware performance that an iphone would be so that way i'm actually comparing the experience similarly instead of something well, that's like a yeah but that's a different that's a different use case i think yeah, or, you know, as so. opposed to, you know, just getting an Android just to see what what Android's all about. You're not going to have unless you get, as you pointed out, like a flagship to flagship type of uh, right. understanding flagship to flagship is what yeah. I was trying. I mean, to that's do. yeah, that's a completely different, completely different uh, scenario. I know, uh, but we're talking about the nuances here, Chris. This is like the thing that I yeah, wanted but to that's know. A, see, but the, but that's a nice to have, not a must have. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Absolutely. As opposed to a must have, you know. Uh, it's a different story, especially when you're talking about uh, old old tech. Uh, Kissa, who uh, is an old school Nomi, she remembers uh, geeks.perillo.com. She bought both of her pixels off of Facebook Marketplace. Six was only 300 and uh, at 128 gig. So you know you can save uh, you can save a bundle if you can get past having new. And I th I think this is a problem with maybe it's our society or, or where we are today. We got to have new. We got to have bleeding edge. And I think that it makes sense for certain products. It absolutely does. And everyone's got a different tolerance, but it's how we contextualize the use of that tool and the value of that tool that I think will ultimately steer us the direction of buying used versus buying new. And I wish there was less of a stigma, uh, but marketing doesn't work that way. You can't sell an old product, but you can make money from an old product because your old product, even if that's not your thing, your old product is somebody's new product. And that's how you have to start looking at technology. That's, you know, yeah, it's, it, it, it's a huge eye opener because you're sitting amongst, and I say this with an array of Star Wars stuff around me, which is worthless to most people. It's worth something to me because I have an emotional connection to it. I don't have an emotional connection to technology, right? You can hand me a keyboard. I'm like, oh, cool. It's a keyboard. I can replace it. It's a replaceable thing. It's, it's an upgradable thing. I can, I can eliminate it and I'm not going to have an emotional connection with it. I'm curious to know that mindset because I don't understand it, that emotion, someone having an emotional connection with technology such that they can't get rid of a cable. They can't get rid of an accessory. They can't get rid of the thing that is no longer serving its purpose, no longer serving its function. And I understand having a backup, 
I totally get it. Like, oh, something breaks, the primary breaks, you need to have a backup. I don't, I don't mean that. I mean, when you start, I don't get it. Having a drawer full of stuff that there's no emotional connection to has a dollar value, you know, that could be attributed to it. And when you know there's a, an inherent need in a greater marketplace for, I don't understand the why you would want to hold on to it at that point. And again, the, the bottom line is that emotional connection. That's the thing that I think separates every, you might have an emotional connection with the keyboard. Who might argue? People love building keyboards. You know, there's got, everything's got a story. I just got to a certain point, point in my life and even storage where I realized is holding on to this something that brings me joy. And I'm not sure if, if any kind of technology solution, given that there is a, there is an inherent value in the greater marketplace to be able to sell that, right? I'm sitting on not a gold mine necessarily, but I'm sitting on something that could further be applied to a future budget. True. My thoughts though. I mean, I realize not everybody is, is, is that, um, Josh, you got to take a break. Yeah, I just need to use the bathroom real do quick. Do it. I have to. I, I, didn't I mean, I'm not saying I got to do it right now, but like there may come a point, you know, in the in the immediate future where this beer gets so good. Yeah, it, it goes right through me. Right. Uh, it's okay. So good. We'll 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 shift gears and pop over to uh, uh, let's go toxic. Do you have a uh, uh, something that you want to share your insight <laughs> no. this week that might be helpful to enable others? Oh, no, I do. Uh, you don't. So, <laughs> I'm just here you on the spot. Yeah. No, no, no. So. My topic this week is is generally talking about subscription services, mm, about mm. the fatigue that a lot of people are going through. Like originally when cable was still a big thing, Netflix came out, then Amazon streaming, and then several other companies started having their own streaming services. You've got families now where that's only streaming services. There is no cable TV boxes anymore. Conversely, now we've got people now having the issue of, well, I've got two, three, four, eight different streaming services. And it's costing more than my my you know, cable bill or my dish network TV bill, whatever it may be. That's obviously a trend now with computer software. We've got mm -hmm. companies like Apple. We've got, um, or not Apple, we've got uh, Adobe with Photoshop. A lot well, of their stuff. but Apple's not too far from it. Exactly. Yeah, I was going to get to that. There's other companies that are not doing it yet, but they've already announced that there's going to be premium features or however they're going to word it going to be coming as a, a subscription service. Microsoft, the way I see cloud computing going, especially with future versions of Windows, is that your internet at home won't be the bottleneck anymore for data limitations where you could get a thin client and you could connect it to uh, your internet at home and you're basically controlling a remote desktop somewhere in a data center at Amazon or Microsoft, whatever it may be. You pay for a certain amount of storage, so many processors, maybe a graphics card, and all of that it can be operated in the cloud. You just pay per year. You never have to theoretically buy a new computer again. You just keep paying for one every month. Unfortunately, it's now going to the automotive sector. So we've seen a lot of uh, infotainment centers. Tesla start, was one of the big companies that started this, where you may get a feature built into the car, but you would have to pay for that feature. Uh, they originally came out with the, uh, I forget what, the self-driving feature. And Josh, you could kind of speak to this. It was originally free with their cars. Then they improved it with some software updates and now yeah exactly improved now, in quotes. it's more of a uh it's not driverless either right you still have to be engaged in some yeah. sort of fashion with the car yeah that's now a paid subscription model at least a after a certain amount of time of, of of a new purchase of the car now josh you might be able to touch on this a little bit better than i would as far as tesla goes but more and more companies are coming on to that model so much so that they're now trying to get away from using Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in their infotainment centers and using proprietary software built into their infotainment centers to basically try to grab some of that market share and then also capitalize on it. Uh, for example, GM is expecting to make $20 billion to $25 billion 
uh, a year in software and subscription revenue. Wow. By 2030. Wow. And the way that they're going to do that is they're going to phase out uh, the, um, the Android Auto and the Apple CarPlay, plus any of that infotainment center stuff that exists today and some of their new EVs coming out this year and into next year uh, to the point where if you want to pay for, you know, live traffic data or whatever, it might be a $2 a month. If you want to pay for satellite internet uh, or Wi-Fi in your car, that's going to be an extra thing. So you can add on these extra services. But it goes a step further with physical things built into the car, like seat yeah. warmers. Mm -hmm. It's BMW got a lot of flack for this last year, and they've kind of reeled it back only in the U.S. It's still a thing in Europe where if you buy a, a BMW, let's say a 5 Series or a 7 Series four-door sedan, they don't give you the option necessarily anymore to – they currently do. They're shifting away from this. But they don't necessarily give you the option for, let's say, in this case, heated seats. They just install the heated seats. And if you order your car or if you purchase the car and you say it comes with it, they'll charge you you know, a lifetime service fee or the feature fee of, let's say, $2,000, whatever it may be. Two grand, you get heated seats in the car. If you don't pay for that feature, you can pay for that feature over the cloud as a subscription service for, let's say, $15 a month, which... You would think, you know, it might be cheaper in the short run if you keep your cars on lease or something. You're not paying for that that uh, upfront feature cost, and it would only cost you, I don't know, let's say, hundred dollars a year, whatever it may be, fifteen dollars a month. Let's say, it costs you hundred dollars a year to have heated seats in your car. If you are one of those people that keep the cars long term, like I do, I usually run my cars into the ground, and you do that service model where you're paying per month. And let's say you, you know, just like a lot of services, you forget that they're going and 15 bucks is your credit card every month. You're going to be paying more than the initial purchase cost of that feature in the car. Going a step further, if the manufacturer is building that car with that feature built in, it's mass production. Therefore, their costs are going down. So in the end game, they're going to be making a lot more money. So the auto market as a whole is seeing this shift from video games to what's going on with cloud services and a lot of software companies right now, where it's a cash grab and your next car could possibly have a, I'll call it a microtransaction or a service fee just for owning the vehicle. Um, so kind of, kind of caveating to that, uh, there was another article that was talking about how the current line of Tesla uh, Motors uses a AMD-based processor chip or computer uh, in their infotainment center, and there is a unpatchable hack uh, to get around the software in that um, their system based on the AMD chipset, where hackers could theoretically load software in the back end uh, to or anybody that could could play with their car. Right, it's not necessarily somebody hacking. But they could go in and turn on every feature of the car that is paid. They could get that theoretically for free. Uh, and then on top of that, if they want to run malicious software or tracking software, whatever it may be, they can. somebody could develop software to then run on your car that you don't even know about. So it, it, I don't like how all the computers are being integrated with. Yeah, but, uh, but, yeah, yeah, but, but how, what are you going to do? This exactly. is I mean, the captive market. What are you going to do? It's a creature comfort, right? right Everybody yeah. wants, especially if it's an electric car, you want to watch a movie while your car is charging. <laughs> you want to be able to have like the 18 speaker surround sound systems. You want the heated steering wheel and all this and this and that live traffic data. I get that, but cars are not getting cheaper. You can't even get a four door sedan anymore here in the States, a mid sized one. So. It's just interesting how the markets are dynamically changing and what the expectations of these manufacturers are. Again, I know this isn't really technology related, but it well, does it is, but it is. The markets because, are, but but are it shifting. is. It, that's the thing. Cars are technology. Period. End of story. Like yeah. this is these are these are products services that we use. We get from point A to point B. Electric car. I mean, it's all. I'm not saying it's a car is the same thing as a PC or a smartphone or you know an excess accessory but mm -hmm. it's still very much 
a model that has been proliferating because the other models have died, right? The idea to, to, to dovetail it with software, right? You were talking about, you mentioned Apple and may, that may have been a, a misspeaking or you were going to come back to it, mm -hmm. but Apple makes a lot of money in storage and software, right? Those services, not the actual hardware. I mean, they, they definitely have a good margin on that. Apple is an anomaly there within the industry, but they've got to figure all the companies that have a bottom line have to figure out the bottom line. And going that direction, it's much easier for them to get you to believe in a product and buy into that product and then sell that recurring subscription, right? As long right. as you mentioned creature comfort, it's nerve wracking because what choice do we have? What choice would I have? I'm currently driving a Hyundai Ionic 6 and there are certain things, certain features that in cars I would much, and I lease, I would much rather have like the, the adaptive cruise or, um, you know, a, a warning when, you know, someone's in your blind spot to have that as a, as a, like a, a service fee is frustrating because I know it's going to happen. I know it's not, there's, there, what are your options? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do if everybody's doing it? And, 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 and then the conspiracy of, not having to rely on a vehicle gets that much stronger because now you are tied into an ecosystem you cannot escape. Right now, when it comes to Netflix or um, Hulu or Disney Plus, like you can choose not to get something. It's not as practical for people not to choose to get a car. And then it, it's it, and when you get that that lock in to the services, the micropayments of those services, it's I it, there's something that's it's anger inducing because I know it's going to happen. And what choice do you have? Cause well, that's it. I'm not going to buy a car from company X again. Well, good luck. Cause every other company is doing the same damn thing in a different way. What you're saying more than anything is that's inevitable, but right. how do you, how, how, what's the, the solution is walk. The solution is not get a car. The solution is not buy into it. Like, I don't think Horses. there's enough, Hor exactly. What's the solution <laughs> yep. to, to avoiding something that is, is seemingly inevitable? You're stemming the tide. Yeah. So I'm the guy that always gets something. And especially after the warranty's up, I'm the guy that goes poking and prodding. What can I do with this piece of hardware or software? What else can I, can I push it a little bit further? Can I get, how can I get my bang for buck out of that product? So again, using the Tesla example, where if I bought a, we'll call it a, a mid-range model, right? I'm not buying the plaid or anything like that, but there are a lot of paywalls behind their different pieces of software. And I know that I can go in and hack that software with a zero day unpatchable attack through the AMD based Tesla chip. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go in and poke and prod and save myself about $15,000 on feature sets for something that I own. The way the problem that I have with it is that the companies are going to spin this as a privacy issue or a yeah. um, uh, what are they? It, it's the the rights repair act is all over again, right? They're going to say, well, it's got proprietary information. There are systems, and it comes down to the point of how much of your car do you own once it's paid off? Right. Yeah, but California is the right to repair act in California is pretty darn strong, and it's getting That's strong. True. It, so right so you can still repair it but that's not talking about the software aspect of your car if there's right. functionality physically in the car but you can't access it let alone if that cloud service in 20 years goes offline and your heated seats don't freaking work anymore yeah i mean do you go in and hardwire it to a little switch so you can turn them on do you you know is now, the one that have to come up with a chip to bypass the one it all? that drives the one that drives me nuts the most is you can't even accelerate at the full speed with a Tesla until you pay two thousand dollars to unlock the full acceleration because it's actually that. it's actually software limited how fast you can the zero to sixty is. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I Tesla I have problems with Tesla for quality control. Like I have no I love my one of my favorite dunks 
is in social media. Someone posts something like they were showing uh, two guys driving, self-driving through the streets of San Francisco. And, and the Tesla was making so many errors, like blowing a stop sign, yeah. like not being warned that a car was backing up. Um, I just quote, quote threaded and said, Tesla's Tesla's are trash. And then the, the, someone was showing close, a close up of the cyber truck. The, the, the seams not coming together perfectly. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, just, it's garbage. Like this is absolutely, I don't under, I mean, I understand the allure of Tesla. Oh, it's a Tesla and technology. I'm like, y'all, the emperor has no clothes. This is trash. Don't like, what are you doing? Like, th mm -hmm. here's the bigger problem. As much as I see that shit, I got to share the road with bozos who drive that garbage. That's what freaks me out that they don't understand and they don't believe. And you're putting the power of that technology in their hands. And I know a lot of tech advocates would have said the same thing years ago. Well, you can't let any random bozo on the internet because then you end up with problems or you can't give anybody a computer because they don't understand and respect it. It's the same thing. And when you build, you buy into the allure of, well, it's Tesla and it's great. And everybody knows about it. And the technology is awesome. That's the problem is this, it's a false sense of security. And I feel like, you know, in, a, in, in this, in, in a parallel to what you're, you're talking about toxic, the belief that car manufacturers have, and I'd say this almost for any company that's got shareholders have our best interests at heart. And I don't know if, if they have our best interest as the buyers, as the consumers at heart versus their shareholders. Like, and if they're doing, if they're doing it right, they have our best interests in heart and, and the shareholders gain. But I think we know how the world world works. Shareholders are looking after the bottom line. And the problem is when we're talking about safety and security, the bottom line doesn't always accommodate that. That's where I start getting nervous to go back to my conspiracy theory about 2d printers, right? That's yeah. where I start getting really nervous. Yeah. This goes back to several different podcasts that we've talked about, even on Twitch when we're on there. We've talked about this, but these companies are not security companies. They're not software development companies. And yeah, it's it's perfect and great for the current model that might be released today and two, three, four years down the line. They're still going to update the cars with security patches and improvements, that kind of thing. But beyond that, what's to say that they're even going to support those features anymore? That's my biggest issue too with the current, ca current cars today. But again, is the how fact that... Sorry, what's the solution? There is well, it, it has to, people have to vote with their dollar, right? If they get enough pushback on these ideas, for example, uh, in 2019 and 2020, BMW tried to require a uh, payment system to use Apple CarPlay in your car. The functionality was there, but you had to pay per month to. Uh, access the ability to plug your phone into it and use, you know, Apple on your dash. There was a 12 month subscription for $80, which again, it's small, but again, it's still more money and a 240 month subscription for $300. Uh, obviously nobody paid for it and they did get a lot of opposition and they eventually got rid of that model and they've just included it now with, with, you know, the current line of cars. That's not to say that in Europe, where they still are doing these other subscription model services, people are still paying for that. But here in the States, it's it's that lifestyle creep or that creep of, well, it's just 80 bucks for a year. It's like, okay, yeah, 80 bucks. That, that is a small amount of money in the grand scheme of things. But when you're paying that every year and you have your car paid off, it's like a tax is the way I see it. So people have to pretty much just vote and be advocate about what they're spending money on. And if they're willing to entertain buying a feature like that or paying for it. I've got, I lease vehicles. Um, I'm not, I, I stopped being a buyer uh, a couple of decades ago, really. And I, I, there, there's a subscription service, at least with Hyundai that used to, I guess, cost money, but then they threw that in, at least, yeah, no, for the lifetime of the, of the lease, right? Three years is, is what I negotiated. But, you know, this is the ability to start it remotely, unlock doors, lock doors, et cetera. I, you know, I, I was surprised that they they gave it to me, but I, I also thought, you know, I kind of wonder if they padded the cost into it. So it was like a silent, they're just charging it, you know, as a, a hidden fee that no one's going to, it's a line item, right? Right. Uh, unavoidable line item. Uh, and, and I kind of wonder how many... Um, how many uh, 
companies are going to start doing that. Not to say that it's, it's a little sneaky, but that's my belief. They didn't they didn't just give it to me. They made it sound like they gave it to me, but I'm like, oh, I'm paying for it. Like I'm paying for it. Like right. in one way, you shape, know, or form. It's not free. free. This right is enough. like the flip side of what we were talking about earlier with the wine and the bottles. Like I feel like liquor companies do this too. You buy a bottle of liquor, what are you paying for? Well, the bottle is so fancy, it's probably that's a lot of the cost. Very true. Yeah, it's I don't know. It's a little concerning where the markets are going. We've already seen a slight downturn in subscriptions for streaming services uh, as far as just people not having as many. Uh, I know Netflix is down uh, quite a large percentage over the past year, uh, even the past five years. Uh, it, it's just the market today is it's tough. And yeah. if, if everybody's going to have Again, my issue too is I, I bought the damn thing. It's yeah. mine. Why right. am I paying? If and I understand if I did not pay for that, let's again, let's use the heated seats. If I did not use the, if I did not pay for that upfront, let's say I didn't pay two thousand dollars and mm -hmm. I bought the car used. I mean, is that my responsibility to say, okay, here BMW, here's two thousand dollars to activate right. the seats? Um, I don't know. I just, I don't like the way so you're, that... you're, you're imploring everybody to just not spend the money. If the option, if, okay. So if you're going to order the feature in the car, let's say it's a physical feature, uh, again, GM on some of their high beams, for example, the auto sensing high beams, that that's just a safety feature in, in the grand scheme of things, right? You flick your high beams on, there's a camera, it can read when there's a car coming and turn your high beams off automatically. That has been proposed as a subscription-based feature. That's a safety feature. That's not even something that should be even in talks about as being, well, I want that feature. That's just something that should just come with the car. Um, so, I mean, people will do whatever they want with their money. I'm not saying don't spend the money if, if that's your thing. Like, go for it. But Again, I, I'm from the aspect of when I pay the car off and it's mine, I should be able to do whatever I want with it. And when there's software limitations or things that I'm basically just stuck paying for just because I still have the car, at the end of the day, that's going to drive the cars to become more of a commodity item or something that's just going to be used and then pitched or recycled. It, I, I don't want to delve too deep into this, but I mean, if you look at EV cars, right, the lifespan of an EV car on the road might be eight, 10 years. Typically when the battery pack has to be dropped out of it and a new one has to be rebuilt, a lot of owners are not going to foot that cost to just put a new battery pack in and just keep driving it. They're going to scrap it. They're going to sell it to somebody that may fix it or may use it for parts to keep some other ones on the road. When you get a 20 or 30 year old car that's still been on the road, yeah, it might be a little rusty. It still gets you A to B and it's everything might still work or not. I don't know. May not get the best grass, the greatest gas mileage. But the carbon footprint of each one of those cars, your carbon footprint on the EV car is actually higher because the longevity of the usefulness of that item is shorter, it's a lot less. So I know those are very broad topics, but I just I'm trying to look at the big picture and with all the technology being built into these cars, I can see them getting phased out a little bit because, oh, well, that has the old infotainment system in it. Oh, that one can't do this. That one can't talk to my phone anymore. I don't want that model. And that drives the cost down and it can hurt the market, right. I think, long run. But we'll see. Well, yeah, I next. Next, it's going to be seat belts and airbags are going to be oh subscription based. <laughs> you know what? It wouldn't surprise me if something like that happened. Yep. And by the way, I apologize. I'm 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 entertaining Jedi for the evening. She's with me tonight, so um, you, you have to pardon anything that might be going on over here. So if I if I duck out of the conversation, that's why. All good. Yeah. Not, not that it, I mean, this is something that like the nickel and diming with subscriptions. It's, it's, I'm not saying it's coming to a head, but 
something something's gonna snap i mean i i stopped like i stopped like looking at a lot of like it used to be so exciting oh the new service does x y and z and i kind of stopped looking because it's like <clears throat> well the I don't mind using a lot of the products for free because I don't have, unless I have like a specific use case where I can apply what it is to something greater, you know, I'm not going to use it. And then it becomes a nice to have, not a must have. And the problem I have with what you've laid out toxic is uh, there are certain things you just cannot avoid or creature comforts that when you lose them, it's, it's, it's a palpable loss. I mean, there, you, yeah, yeah, I, I can think of like 20 things in the car that I'm probably not going to use. Like I'm just, never right. Then in, sure. in, in no scenario, it's the ones that you get used to using that you could not live without. I could drop a streaming service here and there and really, and be fine. You know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to miss a few of the shows that I enjoy, but it could save X dollars a month. I did that with cutting the cord with YouTube TV. It just got way too expensive in terms of what, you know, I might be watching or a Jedi might be watching on a regular basis. Cannot, cannot justify that cost. And I do wonder what that Delta is with car subscription services at, at, at which point you just, you can't justify the cost. Like it's just, it, it doesn't, it's, it's, it's stupid. Not, not, it doesn't make sense. And you'd be stupid to pass it up, but just stupid to have, you know, a subscription service that you're just not using just for the sake of having it. Mm -hmm. And maybe people have money to burn. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I guess I'm not one of those individuals. Yeah. It, you kind of brought it up too, as far as like a an extra feature was another one that I read about the GMs considering is the parking sensors, the things that are built into the bumper and it'll beep and tell you that your proximity sensor that could be potentially, again, this is high level. And there was a, in a couple of articles and white papers that I read, but that is one people, thing that they're, people will pay it. That's the problem. Most yeah, people will pay it. Well, so I want that. So if it's going Right. Oh, well, I want that. So I'll pay the thousand bucks or whatever it is, uh, or the microtransaction. I mean, okay. I've got a, uh, I bought a used 2019 Genesis G90 uh, earlier this year. And the car itself is great. Like I fit well into it. I'm six two. So I leg room and everything's a little bit tricky. Uh, it's a, it's a, what they would consider an executive car. It's got the, the, infotainment center in the front and the rear and it's loaded out to the max score that didn't appeal to me i fit in the car that was the biggest thing however it even for 2019 it did not have it has a proprietary software setup it mm -hmm. does not have android auto it does not have apple carplay which is a bummer to your point with hyundai and kia the parent companies of genesis they are they used to have, I don't know if they do in Hyundai's and Kia's anymore. They used to have a proprietary software where you have to pay a, a subscription model for, you know, live traffic and GPS routing and that kind of thing in your infotainment system. That's what mine has. So I, I don't use that because a it's expensive for the op for the options you get. I mean, your phone does everything that it does. Uh, but then on top of that, the first generation of the cars that came out in 2017, they don't even connect to the network anymore. So well, that in the water is the protocol probably outdated. They they are using the exact same infotainment entertainment center as mine. The only difference is that it was Genesis was owned by Hyundai at the time. So you have, and I'm getting into the mud now. 2017 Genesis cars are actually Hyundai's. So you take them to the Hyundai dealer. 2018 and forward, you take them to a Genesis dealer. So they are physically different brands of cars at that at those intervals, but the infotainment centers, it was just a, I guess, a radio module that they updated to keep connectivity going. So it's physically just not able to connect to the cell towers for that, for that information anymore. But the new models that came out, it's all Android Auto, it's all Apple CarPlay, which is better but it's a hundred thousand dollar base car now. So it's like, I can't afford that. That's insane. But uh, I don't know. I just don't like how I, I appreciate all of the infotainment and all of that stuff. Don't get me wrong. I just don't like how, again, these companies are not software developers. They're not going to keep that thing updated to keep the, keep the creature comforts right. pleasing mm -hmm. to view. 
So it's going to be more of, well, I want the new one because it's got a bigger screen and, oh, this one's got, you know, whatever features. That's going to sell people on the next car, too. So anyway, mm. Food subscription for fatigue. It's a thing. Yeah, I feel it. I feel the pinch. Glendon, what do you got for this uh, this week you want to talk about? This week, I want to go over uh, the holidays are on us, right? Mm -hmm. So Christmas yes, is right around the corner. Yes, it is. I've got family, um, especially this is probably geared more, in my opinion, for me towards my parents because they're they're older, right? I'm a technology buff. I understand technology. I use it on a daily basis more than they do. But I want to gift items that are tech related. And it's not easy to do whenever you have someone that is not tech savvy. So my topic is what should we be looking for as far as products go or gifts go for those of us that uh, are buying something for someone that's not, you know, tech savvy or a newbie or a normie, like Chris said earlier today, whenever I was talking to him, somebody that's, that's not familiar with it, where it's not in their, their, their wheelhouse on a daily basis. Uh, so I've got together a, a, a couple of things that I want to, to talk about as far as gift ideas, but my talking point with the rest of you folks is, is I want to get your opinions on what you would get a friend or a family member that is not necessarily a tech uh, or a geek nerd or enthusiast uh, for their, for their list this year um for a gift uh so the first thing that came to my mind were uh you 3d know, printers obviously no yeah. no <laughs> not for a noob no 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 really no no what do you not, mean not not my dad anyway let's say that <laughs> i tried to give him one and he was like i want no part of it because really? you would be able to live your life and you would have to be over here every day so, yeah, no, I, I don't think that 3D printing for my family members would be my go-to. No, my, my neither. It would never work. Never. No, no. I was thinking more along the lines of, you know, cell phones. I finally got both my parents to use a cell phone that's not a flip phone. My dad fought it for years and years and years. And, and by talking flip, I'm talking old LCD flip screens, not a foldable like we oh, see yeah. now with the OLEDs. I know. He it was held on to it. Same with my nail. parents. Same with my parents. It, they they held on to theirs way longer than I than yeah, than I could imagine. Right. So now that he has one, well both of them, they want to find a a good way to use it in the car safely. Right. So one of the things that I thought about first was like the, the magnetic car phone holders that you can put up on your dash or in the cup holder, depending on, on the model. I thought that that would be a great uh, gift idea for someone that's a newbie because a, it, it takes care of storage. Number one, where are you going to put the device when you're in your car and it keeps it hands free. And you could also on a third note, charge it. Right. Um, most of the time, well, not most of the time on all new model cars, you have USB ports, right? So you're going to be able to use USB-C or USB-A to, to power your devices and charge them up. So I thought that that would be a great gift idea for someone that is uh, fairly new to, to, to some of today's technology. Until you have to pay an extra subscription cost right, to for access the right. USB yeah. ports. <laughs> MagSafe, yeah. it's just not... Yeah, you It'll, charge, bless you. It'll be charged slower. Right. Yeah. yeah, and I wasn't talking MagSafe. It was just, you know, like the magnetic car mags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that you can put up we on the you. dash. MagSafe is a whole other thing that we could get into. A whole other thing. Yeah. Because uh, I... Josh is in on it too. I think that he was trying to find some gift ideas for his parents or family members for, for chargers and, and different things like that. Oh yeah. 3D yeah. print. Mm -hmm. I, I would say 
um, the uh, l- learning to listen, right, to what people mm-hmm. want or not necessarily want, what they need. And this is where it's kind of like in between like, oh, they think they want product X when they actually need product Y. And right. I think just learning to listen and observing can very well dictate that type of technology gift that they didn't realize that they needed until they absolutely have it right in their hands. So I think mm-hmm. a lot, you know, that's customized. That's going to be different for each person, each individual. They're going to have a different set of wants, needs, and desires. But certainly, you know, if they, if you notice, man, they're always running out of juice. They're always running out of battery. They hate holding onto, you know, cables, you know, they lose cables all the time. Well, then the answer is get a, I don't know what you'd call it, like a sled, basically where the battery pack or the phone slides into the battery mm-hmm. pack and the battery pack is attached to the phone. It adds bulk, yes, but is it is it such that they are gaining um, the battery life without having to be tethered to a cable? Uh, right. are, are they, you know, do they carry it, you know, in their pocket, purse, whatever it happens to be? It's observing what they use and how they use technology that I feel is is the answer to that question is observation. And only you're going to do so if, coming up with a blanket list, like buy them X, Y, and Z, I don't think goes far enough. No, y- you got to pay attention to how they use technology. You do. Yep. And that was one of my next points that I was going to get at is uh, for my mom, she's using the iPad more now. And you kind of hit the nail on the head whenever you were talking about the sled, because she's on her iPad all the time. It's my mom. With my mom too. attached to her hip mm-hmm. and Facebook on 99% of yep. the day. Yep. So whenever you say to pay attention to their needs, that goes without saying that's what that's what she's into. You know, I bought her, her first iPad a couple of years ago, and it's probably time to get her a new one because the battery life on it's not so great anymore, which leads me into uh, a docking station. You know, that's another mm-hmm. great gift idea, in my opinion for her and my dad to put all their stuff in one area in one place docking, docking or like station. charging Char- charging charging station? and docking station yeah what would they dock for uh well to charge their devices at the end of the day or so a charging station sorry yeah it's a charging station slash docking okay multi-device okay. Station. I, when i think docking i think um like connecting to an external monitor keyboard mouse right et cetera. yeah no different kind of dock it's a multi-device charging station, I guess, is another way that you could put it if you don't want to go with the docking term. But um, I think that that would be a great gift idea for my parents. Um, By the way, little anecdote that yeah. I just think is so funny. I, I'm so amused Bye. anytime my parents, like if I if I call one of them and I can't get a hold of them and I have to call the other one, and then I find out, like, why couldn't I get a hold of mom or dad? Yeah. Oh, well, he left his phone home, or I left oh, my phone I know. home. Because mm-hmm. we're why would we need both phones? We're both together. I'm just like, wow, okay. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, that's what that's the the mindset of my parents too. Yeah, I, we only need to take dad's one phone. phone. Well, he left his at home because we were out, and I had mine. Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. What? What? <laughs> what is that about? Ah, uh, parents. <laughs> But I, I really want to get your guys' idea uh, and take on on what we should do and and how we should go about buying for others that that are not tech savvy. I, yeah, I think it's all about observation. I mean, it's 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 it's, and I think it's it potentially fun too, right? You can have fun with it. For example, you know, let's say someone's into taking um, iPhone photography, right? They're into smartphone. Right. They're taking pictures all the time. What are you going to do with that? Get them more storage? I'm like, eh. but what would be kind of neat. And I guess they still sell them. You can get them like an actual, like a pretty cheapy, like a film camera, mm-hmm. like to actually oh, yeah. develop mm-hmm. a film that they may have never done before. And, you know, get them or, or even a, not a Polaroid, but whatever the Instax, I think is the brand now, but like a, a camera. Cause they love photography it's technology, but it, it takes what they do and how they use it and just kind of kicks it up a notch. Yeah. And I feel like a lot, and maybe that's more in the realm of retro, but I say don't diminish retro tech when it comes to buying technology as gifts. Retro tech can be just as much fun 
as newer tech. And I think it made this tangential, but like growing up in the eighties, right. There were certain game, you know, d- different types of games and, and, and technologies that I, I was enamored with. There was, there was a, a pro there was a couple of, uh, there was the, etch sketch i think it was called the pixel mater 2000 or something like that and you could use knobs and dials to draw pixels on a screen and i was enamored with it i finally got one as an adult my god this is garbage i'm glad i never had one as a kid uh it, but it was just kind of neat right it was just the, the 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 caught up in that nostalgic moment so almost looking back in time for technology um technology that they haven't seen in decades that's fun so maybe it's a game maybe the merlin right or a mm-hmm. you know, speaking spell maybe a bit too childish but like um something that taps into an older technology, but relevant to their current interests. Right. Uh, and I, I, so I, I feel like just looking on the surface of like, this is the latest, greatest, fastest, whatever. I think that that's a little on the nose. If you really mm-hmm. want to get creative, like I said, think sideways, think what's fun technology that would give them an experience that they're not going to get. Otherwise, who's going to buy a film camera for themselves. Who's going to do that versus here you go. Here's a film camera. You know what it is. You you can use it or not, but you've then at the end of the day, you're going to develop the film, but then you're going to have black and white or, or color photos like that are legit full on from film as odd as that sounds today. It was done. It wasn't digitized. There was nothing digital about it. It was all right. this, this analog process. Yeah. And so th- that's, that's, that's a part of that gift is to give them the experience. I think technology, and I'm using that as an example, can be very much, you know, a, a part of that. Thinking through the technology that they don't necessarily <clears throat> want, but might need, but would never get, or may never realize this is the thing they always wanted, or something that's going to trip them down memory lane. Which for technology can be a bit of a challenge because technology gets, you know, is out of date pretty quickly. But you know, if you you hear them reminisce about the story, like, oh man, I used to do this, I used to do that, I used to play this all the time, man. Video games my day were this, that, and the other. Oh, I'll get the Atari retro flashback or whatever. You you you, li- you learn to listen to their interests or what they they remember and that joy. And that's what you I feel have as a foundation of a gift rather than looking like, Oh, I'll just get them batteries. Like, or I'll right. get them a, you know, the latest cartridge for X, Y, and Z. No, you, you, to me, the thoughtful gift is the one that, that requires listening and understanding and an opportunity to be able to kind of fill that gap. So I think different, I think, think beyond. And I think experience uh, that otherwise they, they would not have. Did you say yeah. think different, Chris? I did. <laughs> I did. I know somebody. Oh, why'd you do? Why'd you give me a camera? I wanted a new Mac. I'm like, okay, well, you're. I don't have the budget yeah. for a new Mac. You got. You got a used camera. So right, bite right. me. Um, no, it's a. It's a great so. idea. The the way that you that you come up with that and to, you know, just be observant because one of the the fondest memories I have of of my dad is playing the twenty six hundred with him. It was my first video game console, and, and granted, I was a lot smaller than at that time, and he spent most of the time playing. His favorite game was Frostbite, so I thought immediately whenever of my dad, when I thought immediately of my dad whenever Mystery Goat a, a couple weeks back was talking about the 2600 Plus, mm-hmm. and I, I think that's going to be what I go for with him. That way he can have one on his own, and we can go out and try to find these cartridges that we had whenever we were, whenever I was a kid and what he, he was playing and he doesn't have any more because he got rid of it. We don't have it any longer. Yeah. Most uh, people but, do. but he completely, he still loves that game. He talks about it to this day. I had my mister that I was talking about last week and took it over to his house and was playing it. And uh, he said, does it have frostbite? That's the only thing he wanted to know was frostbite. <laughs> where you would jump on the icebergs or the sheets of ice. It was like a frogger game. And the, the polar bear would chase after you. You had to to build a, an ice, uh, an, an igloo. So I think that's what I'm going to do with my dad um, is getting him a 2600 plus. Maybe a little bit overkill, but I think that that's going to be something that we can enjoy together um, through the hunt whenever – we go to yard sales or flea markets or something like that because 2,600 cartridges are pretty easy to find out there and they're not very expensive. So, Yeah. Yeah. The part, 
the part about being observant is definitely a big factor for when I'm doing gifts. And again, it's mostly my parents that are the non tech mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. They will ask, like, well, how can I do this with my iPad to do that on the TV? Or how can I do X, Y, Z? Uh, years ago, uh, I upgraded them. And I actually still have one here on my table. I upgraded their home Wi-Fi with just access points. Just got a cheap multi-plaque uh, wireless N at the time. I think they're still using them. It's just ubiquity gear. Again, they're not power users, so 150 megabit is perfectly fine for them. Uh, but I bought a three pack, installed it into their house. They're like, "Well, you know, they're opening up. They're like, well, what is this?'" I'm like, "It's all house, all new Wi-Fi for your house." They're like, "Oh, okay." They didn't really get it. And then when I upgraded it, they're walking around their entire house like, "Yeah, everything's just fast. It just works all the time." And I'm like, "I know. That's that's why you got it." So for them, that was an usability thing. They didn't see it. It was in the background but it was a uh, creature comfort or a life improvement for them. That was just kind of in the background. Uh, my dad, for example, he you know likes to listen to music in the car. There's too many commercials on the radio. He wanted to connect his phone to the car. So I got him one of those cigarette adapter, Bluetooth FM radio transmitters. They're like 15 mm-hmm. bucks at Walmart and you pop it in, choose, you know, stack station, connect your phone to it. And he can stream everything off of Pandora or whatever he's listening to um, and go from there. And you got to think, you got to, you got to predict, you got to, you got to know what they need because they're not going to know what they need. Right. Exactly. They're all, you know, because uh, they're not in the know. And they, they have, they, they, go ahead. No, please. That They have to have a need or a want to get, a technology piece what i mean by that is my mom for example she was getting on the idea and chris we had talked about this again on stream about getting a smartwatch and i specifically told her about the galaxy smartwatch because she has a heart murmur and she wasn't always able to track it on time and she just felt like you know get a watch that she can get that information real time if needed and then if she had a heart murmur she could check it um but again she had a want for it so for her birthday i got her one and they aren't exactly the easiest thing to set up for somebody that's not into technology or always using different graphical interfaces. Like, how do I change this, this, and that? But the fact is, is that she put it on her arm. She's like, well, I got to play around with it. I saw her the next day, and here she watched like an hour YouTube video on how to use the thing. So because it was appealing to her, and it's something that she wants and wants to use, she's willing to invest the time into playing with the thing and learning about it so that way she can get the most out of it if i just bought her the watch and she's like well i don't know what i'm gonna do with this it wouldn't get used so that's that's the yeah like like i think it was chris like you said it was just kind of a need right they, they gotta have to want it you can't just give them stuff right the ipads are huge they, they're on their ipads all the time yeah i i learned that lesson years ago i got my dad he, he's he, he's always talking about you know, doing things online. And I got him a book about how to do things on. It was just, it was the worst gift (laughs) ever because he was never going to crack that book. He was never going to crack that book at all. Well, I was going to say too, like the other thing is accessories for things that they already have probably would be good. Like um, my mom has an Apple watch. So getting her like Apple watch bands, right. Mm -hmm. um, Stuff that that's physical, that, accessorizes their existing stuff that might be useful to them seems like an obvious choice too or if you're just upgrading like that's a great thing about apple stuff uh, is if you're if they're if they have a really old apple watch you could get them a new apple watch they already know how to use it it's all the same software so right you know it's true yeah i'm a horrible yeah. gift buyer horrible i am too though it's hard unless for me. it's for it's... a child i'm really bad yeah, at it i can be good if i feel like they're going to appreciate it like i feel like i know and i've nailed it i love yeah i love people who collect things because it's like okay i know this is what you're gonna collect and you're gonna love it and it's not just gonna end up getting shoved in a drawer or whatever so right you know mm-hmm. yeah it even for it and this is not technical but i've also learned that as I get older, and especially as everybody's getting older, my parents don't want things. 
things become clutter and if you right. don't use it, it's just sitting around. So I've flipped the gift options to more experience to going yeah. out. Experiences. To that's what I'm saying. Go yeah. back to the experience. Go idea. do yep. something. Yep. And that's, yeah. that's so much better than just buying something that's going to sit on. The Actually shelf. the, the ticket for when I went to that game, the, the lions chargers game, that was my mom's gift to my dad for uh, Christmas in advance was to, 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 to do that. And that was a great experience for us. And that's like, unforgettable you know so in, yeah. that's in that brings you back to tech you, you got chargers and chargers are you know, potential <laughs> yeah gifts. those are all yeah. those are all wireless chargers yeah they're why you know even what i'm saying so yeah, yeah. it's a perfect dovetail to that glenda chargers. does that does that you know kind of give you at least that's i think that's everyone's perspective yeah yeah no that was really good i mean hopefully that gives you some kind of direction good luck better than i had on my own i can tell you that good luck because I'm telling you, think nostalgic. Think nostalgic. I, I, I trip. I mean, I, I much prefer like the vintage. I, I, I like learning what people had to be able to get it again, because that, that they're, they're never going to expect it. It's, it'll be a surprise. When my, I brought my brother Adam to tears when I got him an old Lego set. Actually, he's like, oh my god. He just, he couldn't, he couldn't believe it. It was easy because it, it was old. It didn't come with a, a box or anything. But I got it on eBay, and he was just, he was elated. Just the, again, the older, the older, the better, so to speak. Right right uh all right josh you're you're last up not sure what you've got here and then then we will we'll wrap up jedi baby i need you to, i need you to be patient yeah so uh, along uh the lines of what glendon was just saying actually um i was you know last time i was on the podcast i talked about uh the recording process what to do when you're trying to capture the audio and all that stuff the microphones the you know whatever else when you're recording uh, but Glendon just made me realize maybe I should just throw it out there to hear how you guys would mix and master podcasts. You're asking the wrong guy I'm here. Kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just, yeah. a joke. <laughs> I, I, I have a list of things that I, I came up with for when you're getting into that process. I'm not going to go over too much of the editing itself because I think that's kind of something people already know how to do but in terms of like mixing and mastering just a few things. I'm not going to get too far into the weeds with it either. But um, so the uh, the first thing, like once you have your recording kind of continuing off of the last conversation, uh, if it didn't go perfectly well, you might want to do repairs on your audio for I know. I, by the way, as I'm talking about this, I realize how like completely uh, off the mark my <laughs> topic list is after we talked about holidays and gift buying and Black Friday and all these really topical things. Um, but, you know. It is what it is. Uh, you'll have your audio. You might want to do like repairs on it first. I like to do things uh, in advance. So that way I'm not using the CPU too much playing it back when I have the plugins actually in my DAW digital audio workstation is what it's called for Pro Tools Logic. All those things are, are called DAWs. Uh, just in case you're Duh. wondering what that is. DAW. 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 Um, not DAW. DAW. Right uh dope or not dope either that's different um so audio repair is my first step i'll uh, i actually like the rx isotope plugins because it actually comes with um a little kind of standalone app that you can throw things into and run those like offline processes on um uh, things like uh you know just doing noise reduction it has great noise reduction tools um, maybe de reverb if you, it was recorded in like a really reverby environment, mm -hmm. uh, that sort of thing. Adobe actually has some really interesting stuff. I know last time, and I, <laughs> I, I felt so stupid saying like, if anybody uses Premiere, you know that's so bad. Not so much because actually Adobe is putting a lot of its AI smart stuff into Adobe or into Premiere, so. It is worthwhile to throw things in there and maybe try some of the AI and new features that they have on that stuff. Um, so, you know, you can have some luck restoring some really bad audio with their AI enhancer thing, but you have to be careful because that can also introduce some other weird things. And that's the other thing I was going to get to is if you're running too much in doing an offline process on it before you bring it into your editing project, you might end up baking in some things that you don't want baked in like 
I don't know, if you put deplosive on something, I actually did this once. I <laughs> ran a deplosive on everything before I brought it into the DAW to like actually edit. And then in the like, I was about to say third half of the show. No, that doesn't make any sense. Like toward the end of the show, they uh, were beatboxing. Well, I didn't know they were going to be beatboxing in this episode because I wasn't there for the recording. So all of my deplosives, you know how weird that sounded? Because it's getting rid of the the popping sounds. Hmm. But when you're beatboxing, that's what you want. You want that. So it right. sounded real bizarre for that part of the podcast. And uh, I had to go back to my original file and kind of <laughs> take some steps backward on that, which is also a good reminder not to erase your original audio files, not to just save over them. Always save a duplicate file with your fixes if you're baking things in because you never know if you're going to have to go back to it. So, okay, so that's, once you have, like, the repairs done, like, just a few things. I don't want to do, like, too much. Just, like, the noise reduction, the de-reverb, de-plosive, I think are all things that don't typically go too awry unless there's a beatboxing situation that breaks out, which you never know. I mean, you know, we could start beatboxing at any moment. <laughs> we could. Not even... <laughs> There you go. Right, exactly. Um, so so does, there we go. Does you... that software automatically remove like the the S-ing and the, the the plosives and noise reductions? Do you let it run it and then you listen back to it after the software has ran? Is that yeah, how Yeah, I'll usually like sample parts of it, like jump around, sample it, see how it affected it. But like there's different plugins, like they're they're literally called in, in RX at least. I mean a lot of companies have different plugins, but these are like deplosive, de reverb, de rustle. If you have like a lav mic that's like mm -hmm. making a lot of noise, um, that kind of stuff. Some of these things I'll run because I'm pretty sure I'm not going to run into issues later because of them. Like de reverb, it, it, once I have that dialed in on a sample of audio and it's pretty much cons if it was recorded in the same room the whole time, that's not going to change too much throughout the episode. Um, so I'll just get those things out of the way. So that way I'm not running, I'm not throwing them on the, in my signal chain and having to have my computer run them on it as I play back, you know, that's why I do those things. But yeah, they, it just takes like deplosive, for example, takes everything below a certain Hertz and only acts on things below like 200 Hertz. And it, hmm. it, it, it actually does like zero in more on the actual plosives like that's what the plugin does so yeah some of those things are kind of i guess automatic and is that answer your question i'm not sure if i'm yeah yeah no it does i didn't know if it was something that you had to go through and through the editing process notice on your own oh well this needs to come out this needs to come out this needs to come out oh, or if I it see. was automated I see what you mean. It is kind of automated, but you, I, I usually listen in advance to hear if there's a problem that needs to be fixed, and sure. then that makes sense. and then I'll yeah. put it, I'll, I'll put it on there. Like if if somebody was using like a, uh, what do they call it, a uh, sock on their mic, like the mm -hmm. mic sock, uh, yeah, mic sock. Or what is it what called? You, it's, I don't know. A, a flag, a well, no flag. Uh, mm. What, People call I know them there's a term for, you're the audio guy. What are you asking me for? <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm, I'm blanking out. I'm swear. I'm losing my mind. Uh, it's a good is it beer. A windscreen. It's a windscreen. Really good Thank is you, windscreen? Glendon. That was the word. Yeah. There's no wind for. here. Yeah. The, just a bunch of hot air it, coming out of my end. What the, wait, hang on. The windscreen. Isn't that the fuzzy looking thing? That's a windscreen. Oh, well, there's different. I mean, that's a different, that might be more of a, Yeah. I think dead cat, dead cat's another term yeah, for it. Thank a dead you, Robert. Cat. Uh, exactly. So yeah, all those things, if you have that on your mic and you don't have too many plosives and, and you're using the proper mic technique where you're like kind of aiming it away from your mouth. So you're not speaking directly into the mic. Um, that stuff is once, if you have that going for you, you might not need the deplosive. plosive, but I'm saying like the things that you recognize in your audio that, you know, you're going to have to fix. It's like, okay, if I can take care of these things before, so I'm not running, you know, it's it's not taking so long. I'm not getting, like, delay in my audio playback because of all these things running. That can help. So I was just saying do those things first um, if you can. 
then after that, once you bring it into your project, I like to look at it and manually like use clip gain to take down the major peaks in the audio. Like if you know there's a section that's really loud, the, the human voice is very dynamic when people speak. Mm -hmm. If they're not running any kind of compression live on their recorder or interface or anything, um, I'll actually go through and bring down some of those high points myself clip gain is important to use not volume automation though in this case because clip gain is before it will be going through your signal chain so you want to you don't you, you wouldn't want to use just the, the regular volume controls in the DAW because that would be after it goes through the compressor so basically you'd be reducing the volume on something that already pushed a compressor like further i'm getting to the compressor stuff later but i'm just saying clip gain is important when you're going through it and as you're editing too i'll actually go through and manually like do some changes to that to make it a little more consistent so that way it's not dri driving my compressors too hard um so then in the signal chain itself i usually start with an expander or some people use noise gates uh, i like expanders better because it doesn't actually mute the the track it'll it'll just kind of bring down the the decibel it, it'll it's basically the opposite of, well, I don't want to say that either. Um, how do I explain this? It's just, it just basically takes, you set a threshold and then anything below that noise threshold or that decibel threshold, it will reduce the, um, the signal. So like if it gets below 40, I usually have it set at like 45 minus 45 DB, anything quieter than that, it will just drop it down by like, 20 db or something so that oh, way interesting that track that track will stay quieter when somebody else is speaking so if it's somebody that's not speaking if they are breathing you know like close to the mic you wouldn't hear that as much because you know the expander would bring it down if that makes sense um so i'll use those gates will actually mute the track which isn't so great because sometimes you'll end up catching you'll end up hearing it actually turn it off like at the end of words. Like if they're trailing off, you'll hear it just cut out. So that can be a little more problematic. I feel like expanders can tend to be a little more gentle about it, but it depends on, it really depends on the speaker. It depends on your situation. Like a lot of these things could be different depending on what you're dealing with. The other thing is strip silence. There's actually a feature in a lot of DAWs where you can just like highlight the track and It'll be in a menu somewhere. You can strip the silence out, and it will actually make cuts that you can see on the timeline. Like so, when there's silent parts, it just cuts it out. And then, you, as you go through and edit, you can make adjustments from there. But you can Are, actually see what it's doing. Yeah, but a lot of AI tools that I'm seeing, they seem to be handling a lot of this stuff automatically, and that seems to be increasing in terms of prolific you know the, the 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 prolific nature of these tools right like they're just mm -hmm. everywhere or seemingly coming at breakneck speed like is it going how soon is it going to get to the point where you just don't even have to think about how to process what to process you just press a button you tell it what you want it to do and then it's done or are I've we been, there now i've been well no we're not i've been trying a, a lot of ai tools like i've been doing like a lot of experimenting with the automatic solutions and they don't they don't quite they they they're not even close in my opinion to getting it right like i think they do a better job once you have it mixed like once you have something mixed there are tools that can bring the loudness up that that some of the like mastering stuff that i do maybe it can do better once it's but like i don't even know about that but i know like in my two rx itself has like i could highlight a, a track and do the repair assistant and let AI basically figure out what the problems are and how to fix them, but it will end up either over fixing, like it'll it'll throw plugins in that it doesn't need, and then end up creating artifacts or creating problems where there weren't problems. Stuff like that can happen. Like it just still takes it still takes kind of like listening to it and and hearing what it's doing and then dialing it in, you know, if you're gonna do that. But there's that. And then I think, what did I just talk about? The strip silence, uh, parametric EQ. That's another thing you've got to be able to listen for. Like, you know, uh, what we were talking about with the deplosive earlier, you want to get rid of like that low energy and the 
low end of the voice, like anything below 80 hertz, I just cut off with EQ. Um, and then that... See, this is it's so hard to not go into the weeds when I talk about this. Like, I just am like, I have everything written down, and yet it still, it still gets, uh, it still gets crazy. But well, keep it high level, and you know, people. I'll, I'll try to keep questions. it high level. So EQ. So I, I, so what I was trying to do is explain my signal chain. So expander, which is you know to keep the tracks that aren't in use, the people that aren't talking, quieter. Then the uh, parametric EQ, which cuts off like the which I used to cut off the low end and maybe the high end too. anything above 12,000 hertz uh, kilohertz or 12 kilohertz um, to just keep the range like in the vocal area um, and not get any unwanted noise there. Then a compressor I'll put in to help control the peaks and everything even more. Then E, then another EQ module will go in because you want to do subtractive EQ before you compress and additive EQ after you compress. So I'll, you know, if you need like a more presence in the high end or something, I would do that after compression. DSer I'll use actually. I don't do that in. I don't do that beforehand because that can lead to that can be something you might want to adjust as you edit and it's not very processor intensive so you can do that and then limiting and then just make sure all the vocals are sounding equal i'll send all the vocal tracks to a separate like vocal bus which is kind of labeled differently depending on the DAW you're using but most of them are either called a bus or maybe like a track stack i know logic calls it track stack which basically just makes it so that all, you, you have like control over the sum of all the voices. Like, so I can have all, I can just compress or limit just the voices by themselves. Um, so I'm not like messing with the music tracks or sound effects tracks. And then a little more compression on those and, and, and limiting and stuff. And then the mastering level, that's where you kind of, I don't know if you to call it mastering. It's like, you don't need to do a ton for podcasts when it's mostly spoken word but you're you know you might want to throw a little bit more eq on it limiting uh just to bring it up to the standard loudness level that like most podcast hosts will will want which is typically around minus 16 luffs and minus 16 is not decibels luffs are different it's actually a measurement of perceived loudness like how it's, things it's, sound see all this man i it's so esoteric <laughs> I, know, I gotta tell you, I mean, I'm, I'm tracking, but I, this is so <sighs> how you do what you do is like black magic to me. That's it takes the problem. years to get to this level. <laughs> Look, I don't know. You guys are you might be impressed, but like it, it to this is my fear to somebody who's got like an actual formal track. I, I have some formal training, but like to somebody who's a real pro sound engineer, I'm wondering if I'm just speaking gibberish too. Sometimes I have no idea. I'm just, well, like I wouldn't know you sound. It sounds great. <laughs> like I would totally, <laughs> I would totally revert the DAW to post process the high pass filter. So you said this, this is live. So we can't just cut out my part, right? People have heard this already. Damn it's it. Down, dude. It's, it's down for the ages. Man, it, it would yeah. be interesting to get you and Jerry into a podcast together, though, just to talk uh, about audio, because you guys are on the same level. I, I would least? really love to do that, because what I was going to what, what I was actually going to say seriously, like in an actual serious, seriously uh, statement here, when I was joking with Glenn, uh, Glendon about, you know, throwing it out there and trying to get feedback from other people to, to see how they do things or how they think about things. That actually is more fascinating to me than anything else because uh, I, I love to get somebody else's like just project, like audio, like session file mm -hmm. and go through and try to like reverse engineer what they did and, and see like how that would apply to what I'm doing. That stuff I'm endlessly fascinated about. It's hard for me to talk about in a forum like this because it, and it's also something that's just maybe this is relatable relatable to you guys too but like it's it's something that's just ever changing like it's like i i have this process here that i've come up with and like if i really am curious and looking into things all the time i might change this like it's so that's why it's like hard it's like i can speak on it to what i'm doing now but you know in two months and three months 
I might have found a whole different way to do it, or there might be a new AI tool, or there might be something. That's what I'm saying I'm waiting for AI to handle everything. Yeah. Press a button and be done. Yeah, I'll be replaced but, with AI. I'm sure at some point in the near future. But what I'm curious about though is like I want to use the AI to my benefit. Like when I was talking before about how annoying it is to me to sit and spend three hours on a one hour recording just chopping out ums, ahs, and filler words and trying right. to make it all sound right. Right. That's another thing I was trying to experiment with. And I just can't. The only problem I have with it is once I push the button and have it do it, it's like then I have to go through the entire thing and fix all of the places where it sounds really rough. And there are still lots of places where it sounds rough. Especially if it's a dog. Mm. Rough. Mm. Oh, funny thing. I was just working on a podcast the other day where they the, the host had a dog barking in the background and we did a transcript of that podcast to, to do notes on. It transcribed the dog's woof. Wow. It said rough, rough. And I was actually looking at the transcript thinking like, where do they say rough, rough? And then I <laughs> heard the audio and it was the freaking dog. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> no, it'd be even better if, 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 it, if, the script, if it translated what the dog was saying. Like you said, yeah. rough, rough, like feed me. You I know, me. Yeah. I know. I'd be, that would be like, That's holy cow. It's, we're have ca you guys, we're getting there. I'm have you telling guys you, pattern seen... recognition, we're getting there with dogs. Have you guys seen the videos of like people that set up the, the pads that dogs can use to like use yeah. to, to press the buttons to those. say what they want? Holy cow. I, I may is... have to invest in one because sometimes I can't tell what Rocket wants. We are getting to a very interesting place in, in, our technology man life with animals and i'm telling i'm i'm looking for as a vegan i'm looking forward to it but like just to be able to communicate with the dog like is this what you want what do you want yeah Tell me what you no, want people Tell have me. people have figured it out you can communicate like with it's them patterns. and it's it's patterns yeah yeah it's i'm petting really by the way if you see like i'm like speaking of dog i've been like petting the dog down here she's at my feet so but yeah okay well sorry i'm sorry i'm trying to like my Nothing best to apologize for to explain like my There's, what goes on in my head sometimes and it's but like, i think that's not bad because some people may want to know what goes through the head of a podcast audio engineer right I yeah use that and that's a, a label i think and that's, that's i know and i tried to scale back on what i was gonna try oh my and god that was scaling back mention. i don't I, I don't know how you scale that be honest jesus I mean, I, I like it. I enjoy listening and, and, and learning things like that because yeah. you, how are you going to know it otherwise? To me, I know what sounds good. I know what I like. And that's yeah. what I, whenever I watch podcasts or listen or, or, or listen to them, um, I, I kind of see and know some of the equipment that they're using. I don't mm -hmm. know the software ins and outs, but I know what I wanted my microphone to sound like. Right. And through software, I was able to manipulate it. And me not knowing really what I'm doing at all, I watch YouTube tutorials and stuff on on how to do it. Mm -hmm. But um, there's an um for somebody to take out. By the way, there you there's go. No yeah, um taking outs. Not I on this one. That. I respect stay. that. Like you wouldn't believe, Chris. I, 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 I don't want anything to do with uh, uh too much um removal. Uh, I, just, I just, I, I feel it's more organic because people it do is. it. People talk. It's a pattern. okay. Okay. Here's actually here's what I should say. Here's what I should actually say. This should, this should really sum up more of it. Is it's learning about how to identify problems in audio or in whatever it is, and then knowing how to solve those problems with the tools that we have. I mean, it's as simple as that. And then as far as like what you said, Glendon, too, about I know what sounds good. I know what I like, what what sounds right. Mm -hmm. It's like, OK, I, I could explain like my signal chain and my esoteric like combination of things that I try that I, I'm trying to generalize what I do into like a, a few steps. Ultimately, though, it's more like if you know what sounds good and what doesn't try things like there's like a, a lot of different compressors out there. There's a lot of different plugins that do all these things. Try all the different ones. You can trial things. You can download trials. They'll give you like two weeks to trial things, throw it in there, try it. And you'll know, like, I mean, it'll sound wrong. It'll sound right. And like, eventually uh, once I don't to you, but I'm just like, <laughs> 
Yeah, that sounds what, great. No, but that's what the first part is identifying problems, like knowing what the problems are that you need to look out for and then listening for them. And once you know, it's kind of like what you say, Chris, about once you see something, you can't unsee, you can't unsee right. that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that jagginess in iOS. Once you hear it wrong, it's like, oh, well, now I can't unhear that. Like now I'm hearing you know, the, my latest thing. I'll tell you this. I was working editing podcasts for years and I just found out that like, I guess uh, I, I wasn't using D clickers that much. Like people have when they speak, they might click with their they might make mouth noises that make clicky noises. That was not something that bothered me that much before. And then I was talking to someone else who I work with at one of the companies that I do shows for. And they were like, oh, well, you know, are you using D click? Like, what D clicker do you use? And I'm like, I don't, what, are you, what are you talking about? And then they were explaining to me and I was like, oh, yeah, that was never something that like that clicked with me until it literally recently. clicked. It recently clicked. And now I'm like, OK, I'm going to I'm going to, you know, be on the lookout for that. But like, yeah, it's you just you get familiar with things that are pet peeves for other people or things that might bug somebody listening and then try to fix it. I I do not envy you. I couldn't do it. I just I don't envy me either. See, you, but you have to love it at a certain degree. If this is what you do, you have to love it. I can't imagine doing that and not loving it. I can't. It, I love it when I really like nail it. When I like know like, oh yeah, this sounds good. And uh, yeah. Well, good luck with when... my voice. I don't think there's a filter to make me sound anything. <laughs> you sound great. I don't easier. know what you're talking about. You sound no, great. I mean, I may sound great, but it's just there's nothing. There's no adjoice, uh, you know, the chipmunk adjustment knob doesn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> it does. We could auto tune it or well, something. We could, yeah, I don't definitely auto tune. Yeah. Uh, why not? Let's auto tune. Sound like Chef from South Park. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. They need the Chef filter. That's what I need. <laughs> some chocolate salty balls uh no i no good coverage tonight everybody that's the, the, a lot of a lot of geeky good topics good tangents uh i think we're gonna wind down though uh, i've been yep. heading into about three hours here and don't uh, forget to for watch joining. football yeah i will i will forget just just for your sake uh, Glennon will watch it watch it for i'll me. watch it i'll be yeah. good. okay i'm good uh, that that ship i think is i feel has mostly sailed. <clears throat> I'll go. Not too late for you, Chris. I, I I will go to a game. I'm sure, but not like by gunpoint. Probably, uh, is is how it will happen. Uh, we can make that happen. You, I'm sure you can, but let's not. I don't want to be held, you know, by that, you know, anywhere if for any. They have whatsoever. beer. I had, I had, that's what I would need. Copious amounts. Twenty dollar <laughs> yeah. beers, by the way. That's, Twenty, that's, and it's crap too. It's like it's got to be watered down garbage. Actually, like water. They have really good IPAs and stuff. Uh, Never, shut up. But yeah. Great. Now I'm going to want to go to a football game. It's a gateway drug, dude. It is. Then the next thing you know, it's baseball and then soccer and then tennis and, you know, mm -hmm. golf. Oh, oh my God. Golf. You're done there. I can do mini golf. That's, that's basketball. Bad. Bowling. Basketball. basketball. Yes. We just had that as our movie of the night. Thanks to Mystery Goat. Uh, yeah, I've been missing them, unfortunately. Um, Thank you, everybody. Uh, Glendon, Josh, Toxic, a.k.a. Brad, uh, for Toxic Doom, his handle. Uh, thank you for joining on the podcast. We did this live on YouTube this week. It seemed to work well. Uh, we got we'll promote it a bit more uh, next week uh, to potentially bring up chat a little bit more, especially in the earlier uh, moments in uh, in the broadcast. It will be saved for posterity, and 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 uh, the the videos carved out as well for 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 search volume. You never know. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, we'll have uh, new topics next week. Of course, if you want to have us cover one topic or another, you're more than welcome to to throw that out there. You can join the Twitch stream over on twitch.tv slash Chris Perillo, uh, live.perillo.com. Will to redirect to that Twitch stream, uh, which is 24-7. I may not always be in the chair, but usually there's something going on, one thing or another, tech headlines, scrolling through, people 3D printing or making, playing video games or doing something else. Maybe their face is on camera as well. Uh, so you're welcome to join us there, live.perillo.com. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, wind down. I love you. I appreciate you. And at this point, I'm going to leave you to your own devices. And may the force be with you always. That's it. And I'll eat you later. <laughs> eat you later.